Welcome to the Thinking Tackle podcast. Now, if you haven't subscribed already, you know what to do by now. And today we welcome into the studio a man who has cracked the code, a man who has managed to balance a business, a family life, all whilst targeting some of the finest carp the Southeast has ever produced. Tom Lorraine, thank you very much for coming in. My pleasure. Wow, what an intro. Well, <laughs> I do try, mate. Now, I really want to kick this off with yeah. um, talk of a very famous little place. And I think it's where maybe things really crystallise for you big carp wise. And that yeah. is the toadless pit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Frogmore, call it what you want. The start. Yeah. yeah. And this is where, this is very close to where you grew up, right? Very close. I mean, um, I was brought up in the same village. So yeah, um, it's always been on my doorstep. Um, and as a place, I spent a lot of time as a, you know, as a child with my mates just kicking around pre-angling, you know, just, you know, just being a, I can imagine a, a toe rag, I suppose. I can, it must be a great place as a kid because you've got the river through there. I imagine if you've got bikes, you Mate. could be doing all kinds of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we, you, there was the area you just used to knock around in, you know, there was a, there was an open park next door. So, and what generally happened was, you know, as the years went on, we went from the park, kicking the pool around, you're getting bored and then you end up in the lakes. You know, just walking around, mate, seeing people fishing. Falling and in, probably. Up to no good, no Rope doubt. swings. Yeah, must of have course, been. standard, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, yes, we grew up, you know, the locality was, you know, it was there on our doorsteps. And, and for a lot of us, you know, it was just our, our set of lakes. Like, you go and walk the dog around there, you know. And um, yeah, it, it brings back memories. In fact, just, just you know, obviously doing a bit of prep for this mm. and looking mm. back. Um, as I said to you earlier, you know, I had goosebumps going over some of the stuff because, yeah, it brings back memories that you've obviously not forgotten about because they're memories. But, mm. yeah, it brings back, you know, good stories and good memories from those times. And what's interesting, actually, is that that place for other people had, like, it was cultivated this kind of fearsome reputation. But for you, it was like home. You must yeah. have been one of the only people who actually treated For an that outsider. Place. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I mean it didn't have the best reputation. I mean, it wasn't a bad area. No, no, I'm, I'm not saying I was brought up in, no, in the no, hood. No. It, it wasn't a bad area. It just, those lakes did have a bit of a stigma for, oh, I wouldn't want to do a night down there. You know, what, you're leaving your car in the car park, you know, yeah. years later. And um, yeah, it, it always had that sort of stigma attached to it. And, but uh, for you? Mate, it was like, it was home, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, you know, it's, it was somewhere we spent all of our youth and I didn't, probably because I, I knew most of the lads down there, you know. Mm. Um, now, how does this all, um, fit around your family life because obviously you know you're you're still relatively young but you have quite you know, your kids are grown up now. yeah so yeah. <laughs> did that mean that you had like a, a period away from fishing while you know relatively young yeah listen mate you know having children young i mean i'll, I'll tell you straight i was 17 mate i had our son at 17 uh me and my missus was together from like from when we were 15 so yeah, yeah mate you know no one should have children that young and expect it to you know not be very hard like mm. and um you know i'm very fortunate my you know my wife is brilliant um but having children at a young age mate it you know it doesn't matter sorry it doesn't matter what age you have children your life changes yeah and and therefore your priorities change and yeah what you can and can't do your time changes and uh, yeah yeah so it has a massive impact i mean having children young now looking back if you know it's the best thing because mm. all my mates have got little kids running around i can't get time on the bank I can and i'm like <laughs> yeah. not a problem mate you know i'll get my two nights a week in or whatever but um yeah so yeah initially mate yeah having children but i was only uh you know just fishing's a hobby it's always been a hobby for me so okay. back then um sort of pre-kids um fishing for me started locally first of all um, but then I'd also go, you know, I'd see a, a lake in an angling time, anglers male, whatever. And we, I, you know, so my dad used to take me, my, my parents were separated. So my dad used to see me every other weekend and he'd take me to different lakes. I'd go, where do you want to go this week? And I'd go, well, I'll tell you what, I've seen this lake in the angling time. It'd be like Ricky Aquadrome or somewhere. He'd take me up to Ricky and then, you know, we'd be at um, Cuttle Mill. You know, oh, so amazing. Brought, yeah, 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 as far north as that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, mate, my dad was from the Midlands. So right. we, we didn't care. I, was, I fished Bigland Hall Tarn in like uh, the Lake District. Amazing. Yeah, so yeah. We, I, I was never really hampered into fishing one lake i'd fish wherever i wanted with with mm. dad you know he'd take me um whereas when it was my mum's weekend to have me she'd drop me off at the lake whereas right. my dad used to stay with me was so. he an angler no, no no not at all Out, outdoorsman he's a mountaineer um he's a mountaineering sort of um i think i've oh got to get this right he's a mountaineering leader okay. um 
and he's an you know he's a, he's a triathlete as well so what well, it was uh, you know he's, mm. he's, he's obviously uh, older now but he still trains still still cycles and he's a, vet, a, re a veteran mm. cyclist but um so yeah he used to take me around so that's where my fishing started essentially just fishing locally and then looking at you know lakes through the mags really and just mm. thinking i'd love to have a go there so to, when you when you did have your kids yeah how did that impact what you were able to do mate so when you you know your life changes so what i was doing was then i was just going fishing you know i just wanted to go fishing and when you have children your priorities change and i probably didn't get the rods out for i reckon two maybe three years mm. um it might have even been longer looking back but i reckon yeah i de definitely two years if not three um but even then you, you just start going you think i'll get the odd day in i mean you're still only 20 at this point like you, 20, you know, mate, some people yeah. getting into it at that yeah age, yeah yeah exactly yeah. and i'm just trying to think of the dates you know um you're just getting back into it how much things have changed as well like in such a short period of time mm. although it's a big period of time in my life things have changed massively but only four years five years after that we had our daughter mm. so it all started again yeah so i'd waited five years so i'm 22 <laughs> and we had our daughter yeah. so then i was like i sit and hang the rods up again for another couple of years so i never really got back into my fishing mm. for I suppose the best length for you know probably six seven years mm. like and a lot of change well, yeah, that that, time that you're talking about from the early 2000s to probably the sort of mid to late 2000s at this exactly point. So, like, yeah, lot, yeah yeah a lot yeah, is yeah, happening yeah exactly fishing, yeah yeah it changed massively i think you know i did don't don't get me wrong i did a lot of fishing you know during the younger years like we all did mm. um had a break had a child got back into it another child got back into it after that you know it, it's all about priorities we all have to give it a little bit of time for yeah for, you know for the people so, in our lives so when you came back to it yeah <clears throat> you'd seen presumably the leather you know you're more aware this is of the that. best place to start for yeah. me yeah so what actually happened was when we'd had our son we'd moved out of the area mm. but we moved back in the area once my daughter was about three uh which actually the area was park street mm -hmm. um frogmore yeah and uh where 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 this fish got well the lake got its name from yeah uh originally mm. so um yeah walking back around it brought memories you know being back in the area and i thought yeah let's 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 get let's get back at it you know mm. let's get back to fishing and and um i started back on it's got a complex of lakes down there so there's four lakes um various different sort of sizes and stuff like that but the the, the main lake was always you know the lever lake um where where the toadless lever resides an, an amazing like unique carp really yeah history carp yeah um one of i think maybe two or three new levers in the uk mm. that are you know known yeah um so yeah um but, steeped in history but you were happy to go in back in what would have been probably quite different sort of fishing than the stuff you were doing when you left mm. because this is serious stuff right yeah you're fishing for one of the prestige carp in the uk i was out of my depth 100 million percent out of my depth I, i'd started on one of the other lakes you know just to get back into it mm. doing the odd day odd night in fact i took my son with me a couple of times and um as I was on the, when you when you walk into the lakes, there is uh, the island pit on the right hand side and the Lever Lake on the left, and the you know the part the, the, the path obviously branches off, and you go right for. I don't want to say the Nod Pit, but yeah, you go right for the Easy Lake, left for the Hard Lake, basically. Yeah. And I was going for right, you know, for the Easy yeah. Lake, just break myself back in, just enjoying it, mate. You know, seeing how far it had changed over the few years that I hadn't really done it. Although I kept in the, in with you know the magazine stuff like that. Generally, uh, you know, it changed so much and going back there going through all the motions again and and it just you know it just gives you that obsession back that uh that drive for just wanting to go fishing again mm. and I, I was hooked excuse the pun but yeah. i was hooked yeah. again and and uh that's that's where my um sort of la latter obsession started with big fish and that, that is the very start was there a was there a sort of a picture or or a um an article or something like that where you thought what, that finally crystallized for you that the leather was the thing i'll that... tell you exactly what it was yeah i just i remember one day i just said to my brother-in-law because i was fishing with my brother-in-law quite a lot of the time and i said i think i'm going to give it a go mm. you know you don't give the leather like a go you know you you, no. you commit to it mm. I, I think toby you popped a picture up and uh, a minute ago like so atmospheric Mate, we, i yeah. think we saw i saw this picture that you've supplied um yes, and it couldn't be anywhere else really like <laughs> No, is. I think, um, yeah, that shot was taken from a, um, a swim called the Secret Swim, which was actually around the back. So in the in the, in the the distance there, you can see what is what we all know as the, the Dot Island. The Dot Island, yeah. Um, I'll pull now, up an overhead in a minute. Well. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. the interesting thing about this is this shot is it's, it's fullest, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, and that lake used to, 
it, you know, that would drop, oh, Christ, I reckon six foot sometimes. Mm. Uh, all the bars would be visible. It was in these huge flinty gravel yeah, areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, massive. Like, like, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. And you, you know, that's when you try to take the, take the most effort of, um, of, uh, of walking around it, you know. But yeah, that particular photo was taken from the secret swim and, um, it looks like a mo like a, a real steely February day or something yeah. now, or January yeah. maybe, uh, right in the doldrums. I reckon that was probably late February, early March. Yeah. 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 How we quickly were you able to, to see the fish? Like, how when did you clap eyes on that carp? I would, I'll, I'll tell you exactly what it was. It was in Summer Bay. Mm. Um, but it's, it's a typical thing, right? With them small, intimate pits. I mean, it is only small. I mean, what is it? Probably one and a half acres ish let me pull up an overhead what i mean what what, what lake should i put into google for so it's more it's the same one that we did with, with turnus it's more mill um it's, lakes yeah, i think yeah. you'd probably call it wouldn't you <clears throat> yeah but, but yeah. yeah i mean a crazy shape gnarly little pit snags mm. everywhere yeah um, but yeah. that presumably gave you the opportunity to actually get in positions where you're going to see them there's not a lot of open water is there there's no no it, it's, it's you know it's predominantly a lot of it's snag fishing mm. um you know, setting little traps, stuff like that. Um, you couldn't really get around the, the back of it. You know, to get around the back of it, you, it was that secret swim there, that yeah. was graft. Yeah. That was pure graft. Getting your gear around there uh, straight after work um, was, you know, you, we're talking steep banks. I remember having to use like um, like uh, bungees to lower my bed chair down the bank <laughs> so then I could then jump down after And you're it. talking, I mean, from memory, it's <clears> like hawthorns like dog rose yeah you know, overgrown yeah one um, of the bailiffs broke his arm falling down there so down they, the bank. is that the right that's the right place yeah right. so the, the, the little one on the uh on the on the left there yeah this one here that's it so the secret is is down to the left so the it? secret is you've got like so you can see it's like a u shape yeah? yeah so the top of the start of the u almost on the left yeah about about yeah just do it there's a little that's it just a little alcove see there that's yeah. it yeah 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 and then the dot island is probably so you're just, looking straight across to the famous dot island that's very it across that's the dot there. island there yeah, yeah that's it and you can actually see just to the left there's a bit of gravel that's the yeah. end of the point yeah so yeah that dot, dot <laughs> island is where, where terry famously uh waded across yeah that's it yeah 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 um but that's a schlep round because you're parking right down the bottom. Oh, right mate, yeah. So you're where the so curse, you're, yeah. you're where the Mormill fishery sign yeah, is. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, to get round there, you could go one of either ways. It was six or one, half a dozen or the yeah. other. Either way, it was grass. By the time you got there, you know, I, I just set up with, no, you know, no top on there because it was just, you, just drenched. <laughs> drenched. And my arms always cut up all the way. So when you look back on the sort of fishing that you were able to do initially yeah. um, on your return, if you like. Yeah. What what kind of an angler were you, and and sort of how close were you able to get to those fish? What at the start of the mm. level lake? I would say that I, I felt out of my depth, definitely, mm. and, I, and I was. I would say it's the start of my big fish journey. Yeah. Um, yeah. Although I'd fished, you know, lakes over the years and caught many fish from many lakes, that was the the real start for me. Um, I mean, the, the real real start was Smallford, you know, back then. But mm. but you know, that level lake. Yeah, it was out of my depth. I mean, one and a half acres, what, 11 carp, um, some great anglers um, had been there and caught it. Some great anglers were still there trying to catch it. And um, yeah, I mean, the amount of people used to turn up there and go, is this it? You know, and you, you'd almost laugh and think, you know, some people just say, oh, this won't take long. And for some people, it didn't take long. Mm. Um, for me, however, yeah, I had to uh, go through the ringer a bit. And uh, it was a it was a big learning curve. Mm. That's the mm. best way to look at it. I learned a hell of a lot on there. I, I think it's worth pointing out at this at this point, spoiler alert, yeah. you didn't catch it. I didn't. But you're probably... I was the last person, to, one of the last people to hold it. Really? <laughs> well, yeah. When you when, you, when we pulled it out of the lake. Yeah. 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 But you've caught probably, you've done something that not many people have ever done, that's catch almost everything in that lake. Yeah, like, Rich, when you've got 11 carp in a lake, and you want one. Yeah. But not only that, the other carp probably came out less than her. Mm. So like, you, you know, like she was a two, three times a year fish, a spring, summer and autumn, standard sort yeah. of big carp. And the other backup fish, it consisted of five or six, what we call brat pack commons, you know, pain in the ass commons yeah. that um, <laughs> seemed to just get in your way, but you could always find them. Yeah. And then there was a couple of real old gnarly mirrors. So you had uh, the flathead linear, uh, the baby lever, which was like, second in command if you mm. want sort of m m desirability wise uh fish called the fight yeah so that's the baby lever there yeah um, cool carp similar head isn't it to the big one like that kind very, of very yeah like the characteristics are the same aren't they like you know sort of withered little things mm. um yeah that's right i mean obviously it was a mirror but yeah we called it the baby lever um I, mega I only great. died recently Did as well yeah, yeah yeah 
Um, and that, that's what you'd say is a classic toadless cat shot as well. You're dug into the brambles. Like there's no they, light. They there, all, you know? No, no <laughs> light. Um, yeah, that, that is, you're right. You, the backdrop on that is standard, standard uh, level eight backdrop. But yeah. That's actually in the secret swim. Right. That was June the 16th. Okay. Yeah, June the 16th, um, start of my, that, so it's interesting actually, that's the start of my second season on mm -hmm. there. Now the first season on there, I learned a lot, you know, mm -hmm. and I had to learn the hard way by blanking. Mm -hmm. um, I think I had, 40 nights. Right. So you've you've committed to a certain degree there, haven't you? Yeah. As a, as a, like a family man, that's a, that's a decent yeah. haul for a year, isn't it? 40 nights. I've yeah. always felt like 50 nights, if you can do that, that's a good a good yeah. year's worth. Yeah, I, I did every Thursday night on there. Well, yeah. as, as near as damn it, mm. you know, every mm. Thursday night, including the winter. Yes. Um, you know, I still didn't stop. Um, so, uh, sorry, was that, a, was that a 40 night blank the first year? <sighs> yeah. So that's bar, a bar that's tension your, brain. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you're learning, you're trying yeah. to learn the lake. Yeah, it um, was. It was a 40 night blank and I learned a lot, um, a hell of a lot. And having that mm. at the start of my second season meant that I'd learn. Yes. You know? So what, what kind of things? Patrol routes. Right. Reacting quicker. Purely watching car. Yeah, you're, just right, reacting quicker. You're only quicker. there on a Thursday night. Mate, you have to react quicker. So yeah, how so do you start to learn what they're doing this is probably one of the only lakes where i've been fortunate enough to be able to walk around it mm. but i can kick myself now looking back that i never fished it earlier yeah um probably hadn't made a bit more effort as well um mate my, i had a busy life you know it was work family fishing on a thursday night so um i did get the chance to walk it you know and, and i probably didn't make the most of that um you got to roll that quote out, mate, that you said before and i like that the, the idea of the, the leather having to feed us. mate if that fish didn't feed between 7 p.m. on a Thursday night and 7 a.m. on a Friday morning, I was never going to catch it. Mm. And I've said that countless of times over the years, <laughs> and it was true. Yeah. Um, and do you know what? I don't think, did it ever come out during one of my nights there? Possibly. Did you feel close at any point? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Um, so, so let's, let's go, let's go yes. back a little yeah. bit. So the first season was a grueler, learned a lot, met some great guys. And that's the other thing about this place, mate. I've got lifelong friend, friends from there, you know? And it, 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 I don't know, it just seemed that that, that that complex, especially that lake seemed to breed some good anglers, mm. you know, mm. young guys coming through and that. And People like Jake, met, I guess. That you yeah, Jake. Jake. Um, yeah, I met some great guys in there. Um, yeah, you, you learned the hard way on there, you know? And But I, it's, it's funny, years down the line, the guys that you met there that sort of cut their teeth there are actually really good anglers. Mm, mm. Um, and I think that's a testament to the lake itself, you know, and, and the complex, to be fair, because the complex held some, you know, nice carp, not big carp, but nice carp, and none of them were, you know, came easy. Mm, um, mm. So, yeah, that, so that, that that capture of the baby lever there was going into my second, um, second season. And um, that season, my second season, I went from having zero carp on the first season to 15 bites whoa so it's a huge change mate, huge um i changed a few things obviously you got to learn mm -hmm. um yeah 15 you say that tom but people some people don't and and i you know i don't want you to make generalizations i've been in that position where yeah. sometimes you're too stubborn stubborn but you have changed stuff yeah, After I had one to. season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, I mate, I was missing out big time. Um, but I don't think I was stubborn. I think I was learning. Yeah. Um, and no, you'd be stubborn if you carried on, wouldn't you? That's yeah, 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 exactly. I probably <laughs> just, yeah. I think yeah. It, 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 it was more a case of me being probably a bit naive to the to to what I was letting me self in yes, for. Yes. So yeah, that second season, mate, is where it all just changed. But mm. although I caught everything. It's still the one that bothers me the most. But well, that was your best chance, you think, of, of having the leather at that, that Mate, second Mate, how season. can you go with getting that many bites mm. and not hooking the leather? And do you know what? I lost two carp. Oh. One come back with a scale. So it wasn't it. <laughs> which definitely weren't it. <laughs> and there was a bite. And me and my mate Rav talk about this quite a lot. I had a bite. Look, look, this fish, right, looking back, is things you would have done very differently, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's hindsight, isn't it? So looking back, Spring, you had to be in the point swims or point end. Summer, autumn, you probably needed to be in what we call pole position, which is complete upper upper end. It took me too long to cotton onto that in in, in, in hindsight. Um, so had I have done that earlier, I probably would have caught it. Who knows? You just, mm. you never do know. Mm. I mean, that lake broke some big, you know, 
some good absolutely hands, mate. but it made a lot of people very happy when you know it did come along quickly i lost count i could probably think of name a handful of captures that came within a couple of nights five nights you know something like some people got real lucky with that and it, you know and fair play you know you got, if there's a bit of luck in, there's a lot of luck in fishing but uh you know it doesn't take away from the capture in any way no i suppose that the nature of the lake in terms of it being so small yeah meant that everyone who turned up that lake was never that far from the fish no. so you're kind of going to get no, that on you it. occasionally yeah yeah, um, yeah i always felt the pressure there as well everyone was on their ball yeah on, on, on yeah, the ball yeah, yeah. And, and on their game and um yeah you could when that level was due mate you know you know where you, need you to sense be. it around yeah, the lake yeah, yeah yeah you need need to be up that point end but yeah so going back to the <laughs> captures like so i realized that on a thursday night chance of me getting in there or in there was slim so i started fishing the quieter swims mm. so that secret swim that we mentioned yep. um on 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 the um yeah, on the overhead map. Yeah, yeah yeah so um and then i started racking up you know fish so i think i went through probably majority of the brat pack commons i had that baby leather three times oh so that in that 15 yeah that was the three recaptures times. as yeah. well yeah yeah re i mean that's a fish that you don't see many pictures of as well that baby leather it, it didn't come out a lot yeah. i think it probably come out twice a year three times a year maybe i mean mm. one year it come out once like um there's another fish as well did, did we did we get the um the flathead linear did i put that on there I've seen the picture. I'm sure. It did I'm sure Bales caught that? Yeah, he did. Like he did. He did, mate. Yeah, he kept that one quiet. Actually, yeah. I remember that because I was the bailiff at the time. Oh, it is yeah. Is it, that, uh, is, that, is it that one there? That's it there. Yeah. yeah. So that's the flathead linear. Yeah, mate. That's that is probably um, love, that and love yeah, him. Yeah. Yeah. If you're talking back up. Yeah. That's that's the one, mate. I mean, look at him. Little pock marks all over his yeah, skin and that yeah. deep set scale. Yeah. Like, just like. They need. reflect the character of the lake, don't they? These all fish. the time. You find yeah. that all the time. You know, crusty old fish for a crusty old lake. And uh, mm. yeah, look at it. Look at that. And that's what mid 20, 26 is? 26, 27. Yeah. I think, but yeah, the baby, the biggest I'd ever had that one at was 26 and a half. And I think the baby was like 27 and a half. I think, but me. I think the point that I made earlier is still stands up is that not not that many people got these fish in their album no, like no. yes you didn't get there's, the big one, but um, well, it's true yeah. and, and in fact i just i just saw it flash up there there's a little a little a little mirror there and there's a bit of a story behind it if you go back uh one i think it was to yeah um this the, that one yeah that one so that fish is called the spaz right and the reason it's called the spaz is because when you put it on the mat it yeah. is all spaz up like yeah. just all ro like roll up um that fish come out of school pit in fact i just realized there's a leaf on that there uh, and it wasn't yeah. autumn yeah um that fish come out of one of the other lakes um one of the other lakes i can't remember if it's suffering with oxygen or something but they, they, they tried to save all the fish out of one lake and put them into the leather pit from memory something along them lines mm. and that was i think one of the only ones that really survived but they never come out that used to come out i mean that go a year two years without coming out and then i didn't even know i've never seen a picture that's of that fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i think do you know what it may well even still be in there Mm. Uh, it wasn't an old, not one of the old old ones, but it was certainly one of the characterful, you know, characterful ones. So, what what kind of um, approach were you? You know, what 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 were the things that you did that made the difference? If you could pin it down, um, getting off the gravel. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I think getting it's off that full gravel. of gravel that lake, isn't it? Mate, yeah, <laughs> just just getting off the gravel. Mm. I think that's when I realised. I needed to, yeah, maximise that. And as soon as I got off that gravel, mate, it was like game and Did that have knock-on impact on what your technology was looking like, what rigs you were using? Yeah, yeah. And I think that's probably why I didn't catch the lever as well. Right. I think it was to to my detriment that I didn't catch the lever because that always got caught on these little hard spots, these little gravel okay. spots, Yeah. you know, where the gravel meets the silt or whatever, uh -huh. bars. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that... Um, yeah, I probably might, I don't know. Who knows? You can never really say for sure. You may have lost it, yeah. Yeah, and do you know what? The amount of times I used to reel in on a Friday morning and I'd be like, I'd almost imagine myself whipping it out of its mouth. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We, am I the only one that's ever done that? No. Nope. Yeah, right, okay. So it's not. It's the thing, right? If you do overnighters, it's a, it is the I curse. I almost feel like, just, oh, am I whipping that out of its, yeah. And um, I, I laughed to myself because everyone just said, I wonder how many times that swam over your bait mm. or your rigs. Well, how many how many boilies is it eating? I always think about that. Is it eating my bait? Yeah, it must be. Yeah. You know, yeah. that fish must have. Yeah, definitely. Listen, mate, that, that that fish made a lot of people very happy. Yeah. Um, And it still sticks in my mind today. But, you know, can't catch them all. Um, no. I remember that, I remember the sort of, um, that coming to a, an end because, because like I said, Ian Bailey was on there at the time yeah. and I was working yeah. here and so was Ian. Mm. And, um, 
I remember him thinking, you know, they, everybody thought it was big that year, but they were seeing it from the above. And, and the reality right. was it had gone underneath. underneath it. Is it Barry Adel caught it? The last, maybe the last capture? Barry no, was, so Barry was second last there. But everyone was. was shocked at the weight, weren't they, I think? Yeah, yeah, it got worse. Um, I'll, tell you where it's, I'll tell you where we first noticed its demise as such. A uh, mate of mine called Lewis Chippendale, I think he caught it at 44-ish. Mm. Um, <laughs> and it had a little wound tiny little wound and almost like a hook pull yeah or a few of my mates have we've spoken about this over the years as you do and a couple of lads thought it might be a pike spinner yeah something like that whatever had a little wound and it just never repaired and they just, get so old that they mate they can't fight it we had um what's his name the fish guy come down I can't, his name mate wesley i know his son wesley jordan so oh, dad, well, keith 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 came down sorry and um we, we got caught um, late October one year and we tried to sort, I think they treated it. Mm. Um, we were looking at lines of, I think they were even looking at in, injecting it some way to okay. help it. Yeah. But anyway, it was packed with salt, treated and um, yeah, on set on its way then. And I think it was just under, just over 40 then, I can't remember. But yeah, basically it just went downhill from then, unfortunately. And I think it's sort of after that 36 pound, mm -hmm. it went very quiet on there. Um, and I stayed on there, you know, I still wanted it. And we just thought, oh, it'd be all right, it'll get back. It'll get back up there. She's had a bit of a lull, you know, so it's an old fish. And yeah, it just never did. Um, did it come out in the 20s at some point? Yeah, I weren't going to mention that. No. But yeah, it did. Oh, yeah, um, it's fine. You <laughs> no, it did. I won't mention the angler, but no. yeah, it did. Um, it come out, yeah, under under 30 pounds. Not very often, is it, that, that, that actually, where you actually physically get to see that demise, like happen in front of your eyes? No, and it was sad, actually, because it... You're usually fine with these lakes and in these biggins is not always, but you usually see the guy that deserves it most usually gets it. Like you're almost like I'm next in line, yeah, you yeah. know. <laughs> and I was next in line after really this last capture, really. Yeah. In, in terms of, does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I feel like and and the guy that caught it last, unfortunately, you know, had it. Uh, he's the last man to ever sort of catch it, and mm. yeah, it was low in weight, and we all felt bad for him. Actually, we were all there, and but at the same time, we were thinking. Poor, you know, poor lever, mm. um, gutted. No one knows how old it was, but it was super 45. old. Forty-five. Who knows? It? Yeah. So the stories of where that fish came from will forever go round and round, and I don't think you'll ever know. <laughs> uh, there was there was rumours it had come out of Stanborough, right? Um, out of the boat inside. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there was always stories of a lever. Um, out. I actually caught a lever from Stanborough. Looked very much like it. Oh, so maybe, maybe there's some grain of truth to it. Possibly, yeah, yeah. There's a photo of me out there with a uh, Joe Bloggs t-shirt on, <laughs> uh, creating the lever from Stanborough. But yeah, it did look very similar. But um, how 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 did you come to terms with it then? Because this is a fish that you've had on your doorstep unwittingly for some period, but then knowingly for the rest of it for your whole life almost at that point. Yeah. So I didn't know what to do after that. I was sort of. If we're talking about once I'd found it, then yeah, I was a little bit lost, gutted, um, happy I'd caught the others as well. You know, mate, I gave it a good shot, mate, and uh, mm. I think unfortunately it weren't meant to be. Yeah, um, some great guys caught it, and it made a lot of people happy, and then that's the main thing. Um, but I learned a lot, mm. and from that moment on, it was almost about the time I could do and the timing of the fish I wanted to fish for. Mm. So although it wasn't a result for me there. It taught me a lot that probably led to more results down the line, I reckon. Yeah, and I think to, to, to sort of put a finer point on that, this was the last fish that you were really willing to let slip by without yeah. committing more. Yeah, well, I didn't realise back then I wasn't, I wouldn't say I was a big fish like, angler. It was just, I loved going fishing and that was just a target. And it was my first sort of, my first real obsession of, of, of targeting a big fish, you know. I targeted other little fish in other lakes, but... That's when that sort of obsession started, really. You know, that sort of yearning for a big carp, and um, mm. yeah. And from there, I went on um, searching lakes locally. And you know, I'm very conveniently placed. I've got the Colne Valley half an hour one way, and the Lee Valley half an hour the other way. So um, I decided to tickets were easier to come by in the Lee Valley. <laughs> Headed to the into the <laughs> Lee Valley, and uh, in search of yeah, big carp and a, and a new a new adventure and. Um, yeah, that is pretty much where it all started for me, you know. Not fishing in general, but big no. carp fishing. And, and You've come back to it. You've thrown yourself into what is a, a really low stock campaign, really, yeah. ultimately. Yeah. You've yeah. learned a lot. Um, I probably started on the hardest yeah. lake I could Yes, uh, for the hardest fish. 
but you know but worth it absolutely yeah i um, don't regret any of it hmm. uh it's just time and timing mate yeah so how are you gonna what sort of fish could you follow that with though you know in your head have you now got i want a 40 pound common right yeah Okay, so forget the mirror. I'm, you're parking that. You're never going to find yeah. another 40 pound leather. No. At the time, there was Heather, which was still alive. And I believe one in, was it Morton Hole? Oh, up north. Yeah. yeah. I don't even think, maybe it was not 40 then, but it might Far Hull, too yeah. far yeah. for me, yeah, mate. Yeah. Like, you know, on, on a, one night a week. So I had to be realistic. And But was there a certain type of carp that was ticking, you know, that you, you developed a taste for? Um, yeah. Something of a bit of age, a bit of history. Not necessarily something that wasn't. They're not known around around where we live. They're not really known carp. They're not how can I put it? The most publicised carp, yeah. So they're known locally, but maybe not side outside the area. Nowadays they are because we've got the powers of social media and you yeah. know, everything else. So I headed into the Lee Valley in search of yeah, big old. Well, I think it's worth tricky you, carp. You say in uh, about the, the publicity side. You know, you bumped into Terry walking around. At that point, no one knew that lake. Yeah, you know, yeah. he'd 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 even christened it. Yeah. The toadless because yeah. it was a pseudonym because it was yeah. kept quiet. Yeah, yeah. I've just remembered the name of the guy. The photo he had now as well. Gone. Like who was Gary it? Gary Sippitz. Right, right. Yeah, so, um, so you've gone to Lee Valley, which I mean, it had its own local anglers, presumably, who were trying to keep yeah. stuff quiet and, yeah. and what have you. How exciting was it to sort of venture down into what was unknown? Yeah, yeah. It was just unknown. Um, it was. I've never really, although I've travelled fishing around, but mm. travelling into there knowing I'm probably going to be spending quite a few years there was quite exciting, really. And this is still on your Thursday nights at this point? Yeah, yeah, mate, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, um, Thursday nights was what it was all about How for me. How exciting is it as an overnighter? Mate. Tom, can you sum up like what? <laughs> Do you know what? Five <laughs> past, five to six, not six, got five to six. Yeah. I was already pulling out the car park, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's of late, work. mate. That's, most people knock off at three. If they oh, can. no, 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 mate. Yeah, when you work at a dealership, <laughs> yeah. you work nine or eight till six and weekends and everything else. So, I, mate, I used to prep my rigs in the toilet, you know, <laughs> on my lunch, wherever, you yeah. know, at my desk, just whatever. Um, <laughs> and, good, mate, that. yeah, I'd have, so I'd have all fresh rigs on, um, all in the car ready to go. Uh, I'll go I'll go on to this a bit later about wrapping up before I even get to the swim because it's quite funny. Um, but... Yeah, so uh, I do all that prep. Mate, when you've got such short, short time, 12, 14 hours, mm. every second matters. Can I ask, because obviously it's a similar, I, I, I've fished like that for many years, and the toughest thing is how on earth, especially for travelling half an hour to the Lee Valley or whatever, how on earth do you resist the temptation of just dropping in somewhere that you know and, and that you're wrapped up for and that you've baited perhaps? Is that the best you can come up with or, or do you still try and find carp? No, that's your fallback. Yeah. That's your fallback, yeah. So I would always. It's nice to have a fallback, isn't it? So it's um, you. You have to. If you can't find nothing before yeah, dark, yeah. then you've got to drop in somewhere. That was always, yeah, and that's exactly what happened. And mate. Is that, do you still still find yourself fishing in that way today? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm interested though because nowhere is going to be the same as the leather pit. Nowhere. It's such a crazy Ever. little place. Yeah. So how did you find? Um, how did you find the fishing had to change for the next venue? When you say fishing, do you mean like... The way you're fishing. The way I'm fishing. So, yeah, it's just um, using what I'd learned. Using what I'd learned to then make sure that this time I didn't miss out. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, and that was crucial, mate. Like, mm. I'd learned a lot on there. A hell of a lot. Are we talking... Is it Lee Pit? That, uh, so, yeah, I went into a complex um, which I think is known as Slight Plane Pits. Okay. Um, and that encompassed one, two, three, four lakes, maybe five, four lakes. Um, two of them sort of heavily stocked with carp and the other one um very low stock 25 mm. carp but it had a 40 pound common in it uh, and uh, like double the stock of the leather pit <laughs> double the stock yeah four times the size right so that was six five acres mm -hmm. um sounds like than, a nice little combination though as a next step yeah i think so yeah, yeah it, it just made sense mm. it, you, know, you know these sometimes these things just fall into place don't yeah. they it was a cheap ticket i could get it on the verulam ticket as well so the Verulam ticket, obviously, with the, with the leather, um, meant that I didn't have to pay any more either. So that ticket, it was a great ticket, that. It was a consortium ticket. And it, like that, that Verulam angling ticket and the consortium ticket gave you so many lakes, rivers, you know, s to choose from mm -hmm. that it was just a natural progression to head in, head, head that way. And um, so, yeah, I, you know, I, I turned up there, not really knowing too much about the place. I, I spoke to my mate Tom C about it. He'd done a bit of time on the railway pit, which was um, on the 
easier side again. There's always an easy side and a hard side, isn't there? <laughs> um, and yeah, he just sort of gave me a heads up. And I spent a bit of time in the railway pit, right on the railway pit, just having, okay, you know, just fishing really. Getting a few bites and yeah, because you haven't done that sort of fishing to just come back to it. So I needed so. to get, I needed bites, Matt. I needed yeah. a bit of confidence um, and a new challenge. Mm. And while I was thinking about that new challenge, I was obviously fishing on the railway pit. You know, night here, night there, night here, and then um, everyone kept on talking about the the tough lake. And I was saying to people, why is it? <laughs> why is it packed on here yeah and there's no one on there and like, oh you don't go on it mate it's rock hard rock right. hard and um you know you'd see the odd guy walking around they look proper carpy <laughs> and they're uh, you know, hidden up tucked up in bushes and um and whatnot and i thought yeah that looks all right you know i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna have a little walk around that and you do you have a little walk around and it was on that first walk round that i'd um spoke to a couple of guys and i knew that they, you know it wasn't it was common knowledge of what was in there so there was in that in that pit there was 20 25 to 30 carp at the time. Um, the main one being the original Big Common, uh, which went up to 44 pound, I think. I think I might have had it at one of its highest weights. But um, So yeah, uh, whilst fishing the railway pit. So we've got uh, a little, we've got a little overhead. Yeah, so that little overhead there, so the lee pit, you can see the difference in the lake, right? I mean, it looks straight going on, isn't there? Mate, there? That, that, see the left-hand side of that yes, island? Yeah. It is just chocker with bars and weed shallow water yeah, yeah mate like yeah. unbelievable it so was it's a, it's a roughly sort of squarish oblongy pit with one yeah. island in the middle and, yeah. and plenty of shallow water on the left hand side so many features water. in there it was packed Pizza. with features yeah if funny enough do you know what the weirdest thing was that island it barely produced right it did make it made no sense it was all about the margins okay yeah which was, which i mean they look deeper than, than surrounding water a lot of and it was do you yeah. know what i noticed it's one of the things i noticed on there it was almost like a trough i don't know why it was dug but it was almost like a trough around the hole yeah so the margins would go deep and then it would come up to the out to the open water mm. so yeah straight off the rod tips was almost like nice bit of fishing swimming around nice yeah fishing. yeah it was yeah. yeah yeah it made it easier for the overnighters so when you first went on there yeah what kind of how quickly were we able to sort of come to terms with what needed to be done so i was fishing the pit next door yeah getting a few bites really enjoying it but i wanted that challenge that sort of adventure and that so i started walking around the leap pit and um first first walk around I, I found a big common um literally within four swims of turning up on the Amazing. lake and then you're like what sun in itself or or, or in, in moving active, from like one snag to the other right and I thought this is a bit of a gift. So, yeah. and obviously I knew the stock and I've seen a few photos and that. And there was a, there was a, at the time, a backup common, which I think went 36, 38, something mm -hmm. like that. So I knew what I was looking at. It was clear that this one was, you know, the, the biggest in the lake. And so whilst fishing that lake, I was just putting a bit of bait in the other lake and a couple of little likely looking areas. And it was during that time that, you know when you know when you're on one lake, you, you, you can think about as the other lake. Fish the other lake. Yeah. <laughs> stop, stop fishing the lake. Yeah, because um, your head's not in it. Yeah. So that's exactly what I did. Um, I said to a couple of mates, I said, "Look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start on next door," and they were like, "Oh, all oh, right, well, good luck, you know, happy yeah. blanking." Yeah. And um, and I did. Yeah. So I started walking it, having a look round, you know, and and the Thursday nights there for. I came in the gate and instead of going on the right hand lake, I'd gone on the left hand lake. So mm. the journey was the same, the, the, the prep was the same. You know, I'd still prep all my rigs and that at work. And so that every minute I was at the lake, I could fish. Um, that's exactly what I did. I was baiting little like, like, like likely looking areas uh, where I'd found fish and that, and just, yeah, just kept the bait trickling in. What, for, we, what we're talking, Tom, bait, baiting was, have you, have you, were you a boiling anger at this stage? Bit yeah. of everything, or yeah, a bit of everything. Yeah. I'd say a bit more of everything back mm -hmm. then. I'd cross, I even used maggots back then. I don't use you much right. anymore, but yeah, I used quite a bit of maggot back then. Hemp, mate, I've always loved hemp. I mean, maggot ain't cheap, mate. Either if you're going to stop baiting with it, is it? So, but one night a week, you don't yeah. use that many maggots, you know. Yeah, fair um, enough. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't say I baited with maggots. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. Mainly particles. So prepping the classic sort of like maybe trying to clear it off a bit and crushed tigers, yeah. hemp, party blend. Yeah, you know anything relatively yeah. cheap but yeah. yeah but good quality like yeah no there's nothing yeah. wrong with any of that is there no, it's, no, all, no, no. it's all good for getting that so i i, I baited it for two weeks before i'd i'd, I'd fished it um a couple Which of it's a lovely like the excitement must have been building it well, it's so hard that. to not fish it isn't it like how do you that's one thing i've always struggled with is like 
listen, mate, if you, if you if you could just drop on whenever, it's fine, isn't it? But when you've got them short sort of sh- sh- a, a, a limited amount of time and you're baiting it and fishing the other lake, it, it's so hard to not nip around and have a look. So mm. hard to not want to put a rod in it. So hard to, you know, just just make sure the time's right when you do do it. And um, yeah, so I decided to to go on there and, and fish for it, thinking, is this going to be another grueler? or is this going to be where I've got to go through all the stock? Or I just didn't know. I mean, the fish came out, you know, it come out spring, summer and autumn again. And, it, and most big fish, you, you want to, they usually have pretty similar routine, spring, summer, autumn, generally. Um, and this particular one was no different. Sometimes it would skip the um, the um, summer capture, but spring and autumn. Because generally you don't get the anglers perhaps as no. well. Once I think that's spawned, what it's pressure. You know, yeah, 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 yeah fish is down. But I think it was always around £39 anyway when it spawned mm. out, 38 mm. maybe. Um, but it, generally that was, a, I think it was, a, I might, I'm pretty sure it was always 40, if not out too shy. Okay. So, yeah, that started. And mm. um, and when you, when you did drop on, had the spots developed um, the way you'd hoped? Yeah. In terms of the prep? Yeah. yeah. Not only that, I kept on seeing it there. Every oh, time really? I was there on a Thursday, I'd turn up Thursday, it was there. Yeah. Or there or thereabouts in the area. Either at one of my swims, which was at one end, or and I baited the other end as well. Like mm. another couple of, technically I baited three zones. From okay. Three different banks. Yeah. Just so I had options. Absolutely. Um, which, but I'd never been able to do that. I'd never been able to bait a lake, not fish it, fish the lake next door. So I was happily having bites and then going back on there to mm. sort of just reap the benefits to see what my baiting was doing. But what actually happened was you found it gravitating towards one of the spots, did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. because it kept, 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 every time I was there, was it more so in the evening? So I'd turn up in the evening and I'd go around with, a, with like a torch mm. and it would be in there. Um, and that's where I decided. Okay. I mean, you cannot be more confident, presumably, at this well, point. Well, no, because you're seeing it, at the times where I'm going to be at the lake, yeah. where I'm going to fish, and <laughs> where it's about, just where um, it's feeding. Sorry, so where about sorry, so just for people. So I home. baited top right hand corner. So you're yeah. baiting up here, yeah. yeah, yeah, literally right there. That's it. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Christ, you, you, you watching me? Nailed that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, literally there, and then um, the top left hand corner. Okay, good winds and bad winds, basically. Yeah, but it was the top right where it, where it rocked up. Yeah, yeah, C- constantly mm-hmm. like. I almost have thought, well, I wonder if I come down Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whether it's still there. Yeah. Like, and is that the point with the bait in that these small particles, you're hoping there's enough staying in the swim for a few there, days? Yeah. To keep it coming back there, yeah. you know, to make hopefully my job easier. Because don't forget, going back to the lever lake, that's that's where I learned this sort of technique, you know. Yes. Um, because you were choosing the quiet swims and you needed to get them. Yeah, I needed to. Like, no it. one was yeah. really fishing that swim. Nowadays, you go into to where that cursor is now, mm. That's probably one of the most popular swims on the lake, but it wasn't then. Okay. Um, and the carp got in there. Um, Did it have some woodwork nearby that they made the whole lake? Using? The whole okay. lake is stacked. Which in snags. always makes it difficult to know which, which ones they like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they do. They favoured two more than any, right where the cursor is, and probably bottom left, middle of the picture, really, along the road bank. Okay. Which was weird because it was probably one of the most busiest banks. Mm. It's got the road. You, know, you could feel the you know the, the ground yeah. vibrating yeah. And, but the fish loved it in there um the other main question i'd have about that kind of approach is how much do you bait with on the you know leading up to your trip yeah and then are you dropping the smaller elements of the food out when you fish if, if i'm fish back then if i was fishing the lake i'd always bait more when i left because i was trying to get something going on the lake that i wasn't fishing i was baiting when I got there and when I left as well. So I was having to bait two lakes. Yeah. Yeah. So it was obviously I was fishing one and then I, I, in, in the plans of fishing the other. But when I eventually took the leap and went on to the leap here, um, yeah, I'd always fish over a little, but bait a hell of a lot when I left. Uh-huh. So a couple of buckets. And in terms of the stuff you're fishing over, are you replicating what you're putting out or are you? Are yeah. You- back then I was. Yeah. 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 Um, I say back then because I do a lot of boilie fishing nowadays. Mm. Um, but yeah. Um, I'd always fish over something quality, you know, top quality. Um, usually just a couple of cat fold, cat, catapult fulls of boilies or whatever. Okay. Um, but the actual spot clearing was done with a hemp, crushed mm. tigers, party blend, stuff like that. 
I mean, that's the sort of, that would be your like your classic, wouldn't it? In yeah, a way. Your classic. You're not going to get a bite over a load of seed, are you? Nece- in your not short quickly, window, necessarily. Quickly, no. And you've got twelve hours to make it happen. Yeah, yeah. So you need a quick. And in terms reaction. of that, with that in mind, these, these short windows. Yeah. As an overnight angler, mm. how fastidious did you have to be about making sure the rig was where it needed to be the way you know that you were happy with presenting Mate, the rods were never like? going left unless i was happy and that that's something that you have to do like no matter how long you've got on the bank um you've got to be 100 percent confident in, in your approach mm. otherwise why like those one percents all add up it's so frustrating it can be so frustrating when it's not going right yeah and, and it's getting dark or yeah. whatever have you been are you a relaxed angler around that sort of no no <laughs> <laughs> mate ask that anyone everyone honest. knows i'm highly strung <laughs> right. so yeah i'm quite a, i don't see it but a lot of people say it but yeah so um i am i am, mate i can be a bit aggy a bit stressful um, so don't come in your swim if you are having mares mate do not interrupt me while i'm getting the rods out um <laughs> give me 20 minutes half hour you'll know when i'm happy because i'll be sitting there smiling yeah but other than that just ignore me um no it's uh yeah stressful mate and don't, a lot of the times for probably six months of the year i was doing this in the dark mm. so i say six months yeah probably was it probably is, is six months th- see for me and you might be the same it's not the bits where you know it's dark. It's the bits where you're racing it. Right. The <laughs> worst thing in the world. <laughs> the best thing to be is just, you yeah. know, how many times you do, there's a period, isn't there, of probably about six weeks, eight mm. weeks, where you're fighting that last hour yeah. of light. Yeah. And in the moment you can't fight that, and it a lot easier, and it yeah. a lot more laid back, the journey there is a bit more pleasant. Yeah, absolutely. It's dark now. It doesn't matter whether I get there. It's not going to be any dark, darker. Yeah. It's just dark. So, um, yeah, yeah, there is, mate. That that t- I hate that period. In fact, I love the period of fishing, but I hate that time mm. of the year where I, when well, I, I mean, used part to be, of that spring, isn't it? So you kind of love it, fighting, you know, but, yeah, yeah but, just fighting to get there before dark and hoping because there was always a better chance of getting the rods out to that snag line, knowing that they're spot on. Technically, uh, a difficult spot to fish, or, or yeah. straightforward. No, it was a pain because what I used to do is I used to get my head torch, um, walk round, clip it onto a tree so I could see where it was. Sounds terrible lighting the swim up. But, I don't think it makes that much difference to me. I thought, well, what's no? You've already looked at the fish feet, exactly. You know, yeah. I, I was using the torch to yeah. see them anyway, and then I'd cast over to that using another head torch. I'd almost have like two lights, um, and that made it you know a lot easier. And I still use that technique now, really, mm. but I just use one torch from the bank because they're so bright now, aren't they? Yeah, Some mate. Sort of the, the quality yeah. of the torches now, yeah. you can see to the far banks, so you just put it on the floor. I mean, I, I, yeah, you usually put it on the floor, didn't you? And just mm. sort of, um light up your swim yeah but, but um quite rightly but i mean a lot of that light's bouncing off anyway isn't yeah it? it's at it that is, angle, it so. is. yeah yeah and you know it's like when you're trying to get on these little spots these little areas it was a tricky cast actually um, i need you to fish one rod on it and one rod off of it um but yeah so i persevered yeah just so started on that leap it mm. got that sort of spot rocking and then I, I, it got to a point where i thought how many times i'm going to look at this feeding on the spot before i just bite mm. the bullet and go and fish for it but because there was other fish in there as well you know, I was happy to catch the others as well. It wasn't yeah. just about that one, although it was. Um, I really wanted that one. You didn't feel that the more fish you caught off the spot, the less chance of the, of the big one, if you like? No, because I didn't really know how they'd react to okay. it. Okay. Um, but I, so I'd had a couple of fish off that. Um, it started working quick, you know. Literally, mm. first night, I think I had a 26. Second night, no, I had a 26 that night, 28 in the morning. And I came back the next week. So this would have been my second night. And Rod went out sweet. I think it was September, mm-hmm. roughly. Um, so, yeah. Tell you have me. got the light at that point, haven't you? Just about. Just. So, yeah. yeah, it was one of them nights. No, do you know what? That night, no, that night, I got stuck in the M25. Oh. Turned out in the dark. Yeah, you don't live close lost, enough lost to Lost my Bay, shit on the way it? down yeah. there. Yeah. Um, just, oh, that's it then. It's dark now. <laughs> and um, yeah, and it was one of them nights it was standstill. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I remember getting there and I thought, you know, you're barreling down to the swim and I'm like, there's no one in there. And you, I sort of nipped him, cast them out, got them out on the spots, thought nothing, you know, a mm. little bit stressed. And um, had a, a small mirror. So it's only my second night on the spot small mirror and i thought god this is this is productive you know really productive for a, let's not forget this lake is 25 30 carp maybe 35 there's always numbers discrepancies but 25 35 carp um three carp two nights in mm, you 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 know it's it's granite allegedly isn't it yeah well, yeah yeah, yeah. Well. and yeah. i was like this is working you know you, you know you've got to be happy with that haven't you mm. um later on that evening 
Um, I just slipped one back. I must have been gone half nine, ten o'clock. And then about half past eleven, I'd like a, a slow pull up. And I thought, is that a bite or a liner? And it suddenly, like literally, I was fishing locked up. Roger just gone, you know, forward. Mm. And I've sort of jumped out. I was always sort of standing near it, um, hit into it, and it just sort of, you know, you just you feel the weight difference, mm. don't you? Straight mm. away. And I thought, Christ, this is this is this has got some weight to it. And it sort of just plodded out in front of me like that, up and down. Wasn't really taking much line, more kiting. And it was plodding up and down. And I thought, this feels a bit bigger, like a hell of a lot bigger to the 20 pounders <laughs> I've just been catching. Mm. And um, I remember thinking then, there's a good chance this could be it. Cause it, you know, oh, I forgot to say, when I turned up and went round to lamp the, the spot, she was there like swimming just to, I would say she's further in the snags than normal, uh -huh. which I thought was odd. Cause usually she was out in this opening bit. Um, but anyway, the rods went out and, and I got that bite. And as she was plodding around in front of me, big deep margin, 16 foot, I think it is there, put my head torch on and I could just see her just twisting in the margins Amazing, below. Yeah. And I thought, shit, it's, you know, it's, it's to be common, it's yeah. gotta be. And um, I bundled it into the net. I was just, mate, just in disbelief, like how quickly, second night, how quickly that had happened. But do you know what I've just forgot? One of the main stories of this, one of the main things about this story was, Two weeks prior to me going on there, it had actually been found dead. <laughs> right. It had been found dead up the other end, that top left hand corner. Yeah. The mates come around and say, Oh, it's been found dead. But I was knowing, I was still seeing it. Yeah. I'd seen it in that two weeks. So then I started thinking, Was it the other one? I, but there was no mistake, mate. This fish was a mid 40 common, mm. you know? Um, and uh, yeah, just disbelief that. Well, that's double the the, it's the, the elation, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it's yeah, yeah. Not, not only is yeah. it not dead, you've got it on the end. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, I couldn't believe it. Like the, the rumours that went round mm. and um, it was quite quiet because of that as well, you know. I kind of, um, that, yeah, you're not going to dispel those no, rumours, are you? No, you you're yeah. not. Well, well, I wasn't really, yeah, that's, yeah. that's it there. So uh, that was, that was that's actually the second time I caught it, that photo. Uh, I had really bad night shots the first time. Mm. Um, it's a great carp. It's a, it's a deep bodied common yeah, there's um, just not many like that. Yeah, thick um, tail, wrist, big round tail. For those of those listening, yeah, sort of bluey grey across the head, and then yeah. that sort of washed out gold across the it's flanks. Just, if that's how you want a mid forty common to look, and then yeah. that's exactly it. Bit of age. It's not a long bit one. of character. It's, it's not a long it's one. A, it's, it's, a, a, it's a it's a it's a. I don't want to say fat because it's uh, no. It's, it's not just a, a thick set, deep bodied it's a very carp. Deep it? bodied yeah. carp. Yeah, there. Deep bodied. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you know what it did? It always had like a grey hue to it, mm. like bluey grey hue to it, and crucially though you've you've laid to rest the ghost of the toadless you caught it quick straight time. away yeah. yeah how some people used to catch the toadless within mm. a couple of nights but you know. actually but but this is legitimate yeah you know you haven't fluked this at no, all. no 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 this is yeah no. it's two, two weeks I, i'm going to be honest it's probably two weeks of graft you know mm. um not graft but two weeks of prep and <clears throat> the prep side you know is going to be really important for our chat because so many people are in the same boat as you with that yeah I suggest it's that quite a lot of people don't do the prep. You know, mm. is, are you drive? Are you driving to the lake between trips as well, or are you no. just able to get there the one time? So That's it's a big it. hit of seed going in. Yeah, commit into that. Yeah, and then yeah. Um, listen. I'd rather be going every other day, mm. but I couldn't. You got a battle of twenty five, and it, Lee Valley ain't that close to. I've so, got a time to, no. right to do right. that. Like yeah, that could be on a good day. It's you know an hour and a half round trip. Plus walking around the lake, plus baiting and everything. You know, a bad day. That could be a four or five hour round trip. You know, if you get caught, like I did that night before I caught that, mm. you know, an hour, uh, a 45 minute journey on rush hour, hour journey at rush hour turns into an hour and a half, two hours, you know, with a traffic jam. So yeah, it was all done. All done. Just, That's, yeah. Legitimate the overnighters. Yeah. You were not even baiting. So no, no, no. Apart no. from that, though, yeah. on the trips. Yeah. So you stayed on clearly because you've, you then caught it again, as you just said. Yeah, so there's a bit of a thing here. So although that common was the biggest one in there, I had a couple of backup mirrors, one called the Halfling, which came out literally once every two years. Uh, it was so rare, that car. Uh, almost to the point that every year you go, it's dead, you know, <laughs> dead again. Yeah. Um, and then someone would have it, you yeah. know, 18 months, 20 months later, and they'd be like, oh, it's still in there. Uh, so I stayed on for that. And 
because I didn't really have anywhere immediately to go. Mm. But I'd seen some nice fish in there and I thought, let's have a go at some of the others. You know, I was enjoying myself. I was only a couple of nights in, Rich. You know, it's, not, yeah, so it's, not like it's almost like an anti It's never going to be anti climax. You know what I mean, though? I've but, always had this argument. Yeah. What's the best way around to do it? <laughs> Catch a target first and then not have to worry about the rest or to do it gradually and have a few mm. along the way. Mm. Um, and yeah it's, it's, you've gone from one extreme to the other really yeah. haven't you there in the space of a year it couldn't have been any complete yeah. you know complete turnaround yeah but the relief was is so good because i thought yeah you know i wasn't doing anything wrong it just didn't happen on the lever and and for it to happen so quickly on now i felt rewarded if, no. i remember i remember a, i put a post up at the time and a mate of mine said uh that couldn't have happened to a nicer guy at the right time. Mm. And that's that quote still with that, that, that thing, it was Lewis Chippendale that said it. And I uh, thought, oh, do you know, he's right. You know, it's a real nice thing to say. And it, um, yeah, it was sort of, it, I felt like I deserved it, although I didn't technically deserve it for the time that I'd put in. I, I'm interested in the, in the way that the, that the action unfolded for you actually, because you're seeing the fish in the snag mm. at night. Yeah, You've had the bite at night. Yeah. And also, you've had the bite pretty quick after getting the rods out. Yeah, I'd already had a fish as well. Right. I mean, do you think the fish had pushed back in the snag? I think they spent, mate, that lake, Rich, the lake was so encompassed with snags that I think they spent 90% of their time in them. And I don't mean in that snag, I mean in all of them. They'd probably just swam round because they did, they, mate, they used to use, that, use the whole lake, but the margins. A lot of the bites were in the margins. Mm. Um, so. Yeah, I can't remember where we were going. I was going to say that the fact that fish had pushed deeper I into think the snag, think it, that helped you getting the rods out that night? or I think it might have helped me when I had the first yeah. bite mm -hmm. because it wasn't quite as o in the open as it usually was. It was really deep in there and I thought, That's d it's not usually there at this time. It's usually yeah. there, yeah. you know, because yeah. um, they are creatures of habit, mate. These fish generally visit the did same you, zones. Did, by the way, did you nail it? Was your recast... On point, like we straight away, yeah. yeah. But I'd done, I'd, I'd, I'd done quite a lot of night casts, so it wasn't in the, you know, it, it could still go wrong. It, but, it can, yeah. yeah. I mean, it went wrong a few times, yeah. yeah. But yeah, but, but no, that night, mate, everything went out sweet because I'd had the stress of the motorway. I got there and I thought well, it's dark now anyway. It, you know, it's done, isn't it? So yeah, yeah, just went through the motions and. Um, Do you find it with, with that? You know, the, the the torch on and you're able to see the the landing, if you mm. like. It takes away some of the. Um, doubt about yeah whether it's landed right does that make it better or worse oh well, oh sorry what for casting yes yeah 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 100 yeah mm. it's a confidence thing again it's the, it's then one percent isn't it it's making yeah. sure that you've got everything correct for the short amount of time you're there your rigs casting the drop everything has to be spot on mm. um in terms of technology part, like what you know does that filter down into the rigs you're using in terms of the way that they're presenting or or you, you know you just is it something that you're familiar with from the toadless like what did you what were you putting yeah, out so i just so because because they were cleaning up those bits so quickly and thoroughly and staying there and clearly liked it um my plan there was to fish tiger nuts mm -hmm. um and that's what i did um and i think that's probably what Got me the quick bites. A bit of balance or? Uh, you, no, you, mate. You I used to use dub, double. Heavy then? Yeah, yeah, smaller. It's funny. JT would say this. I used to use the, the long shanks because yes. he's quite a long shank fan. Yeah. And um, I think I showed him my rig at some point and he was like, yeah, long live the long shanks. Mm -hmm. And um, I caught it on a, on a size 10 cord, a long shank mm -hmm. and two um, tiger nuts. Yeah. He got coated braid. It yeah, would, it would have been. Yeah, wouldn't it? it, it would have been. Long shank, so that I can't even remember. A little combi was. sort of thing. Yeah, do you know it was yeah. PB Jelly Wire? Yeah, yeah, yeah. PB Jelly Wire. Um, lots of people, lots of people used it, didn't they, back then? Yeah, I think it was the yeah. one to use. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so uh, a, a rig that's uh, out and out bottom bait is going to flip yeah. and turn really well with that yeah. old long shank, isn't it? It yeah. seems to be. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. So going on from there, did you? Did you have that, like, there was the half line, like, in your mind? Yeah, so I just yeah. thought, I've got nowhere to go immediately, because let's face it, I didn't think I was going to catch it that quick. Um, and I was quite happy there. I quite enjoyed it. It was quiet. It was low stocked. It was one of them sort of same stigma again, quiet, low stock, not known as being the safest place in the world. Um, but not, you know, not a hellhole, just, just you know. I mean, let's, for context, the southeast of public lakes. That, this, this area you're fishing mm is in the orbit of London. Yeah. There are a lot of people, aren't there? And, yeah. and these sort of more isolated parts of mm -hmm. the valleys, you yeah. know, yeah, kids are going to go there and yeah, drive there yeah, and yeah. occasionally a yeah. car's going to get burned yeah. out or whatever. But Plenty of undesirables. You, yeah. 
because you're in the orbit of one of the, the busy cities in the world. Right. Yeah, right? exactly, um, exactly. But for you, this was quite normal, and yeah, you know, you're it not was. Get... Yeah, yeah, and it was. Uh, I always, we always say is like you do sleep with one eye open, like in, in. But I think you do unless you're gated in anywhere really safe. Yeah, like I think you sort of do. You never really get into that deep, deep sleep. Mm. Um, I mean, we're going to talk about the Met and stuff yeah, at some point. yeah. I mean, well, these are that, all that, that, lakes that, <laughs> that that leads on to this. But so th there's a little bit of a story behind this. So there was a there was a big common in the railway pit across the path. Yeah. Now, at the time, I didn't know this, but someone had moved it. Mm -hmm. and it had been moved into the lee pit so during my carrying on of fishing the lee pit i'd had a couple of um actually have you got that dark one up there um there's a couple of other fish in there and there was a real good stamp of fish in there the fish in there were quality you know they were there's a thick wristed one a dark one there was the half lin there was like a handful of what we there called the right? stockies yeah so that fish there that's one of the other stock Lovely that i had out of there yeah um, I think we call that the dark one, or it's probably been renamed. Small headed, like banana yellow belly, yeah. real, real cute wrist. tail, like yeah. a thick tail. Yeah, yeah. thick tail. Um, How big was that, mate? <sighs> looks 36, massive. 38, yeah, I think. Yeah, massive, yeah. Though. And I tell you what, that is the colour. That carp was like, um, every time I see a photo of that, it's black. Um, mm. That was that was awesome, that, mate. Yeah, yeah so that's, that's like one of your back, that's one of your main fish now. Plastered like. with little tiny starbucks. Yeah, there well. is, yeah. yeah. You can see a lot of the stockies were like that as well, so I can't see because of the glare, but yeah, you can just- Towards also, the back end, yeah. Yeah, that's it. And um, a lot of the stockies were like that as well. I mean, there was fish like that, almost identical to that, that were 20 pound. Mm. So I was happy catching them, mate. Of oh, course, yeah, yeah. So in the, after catching that common, uh, um, the, the um, and this half limb was on the missing list and had been for, I think, 18 months at the time. Um, I kept on seeing another common. Now, when I was told about the stock of the lake, I was told there was a 36, 38 pound common and the big common, the original common. Well, obviously, one of them had died, right? Mm. Which turned out wasn't the big common. So it must have been the backup common. Very similar fish, but probably six, eight, eight, six pound difference, mm. eight pound difference in weight. But I kept on seeing, sorry, excuse me. Um, I kept on seeing another big common and I, I and I, I forgot to mention that the the original big common during this time had, had passed away so it died and before it died I kept on seeing another common in there but it threw me because I'm thinking well that's a big common yeah maybe that backup one didn't die mm. and you know I because I didn't know that this other fish had been no put okay. in from the other lake and uh, to be honest no one did um, there was probably two people, the guy that did it and his mate. Mm. Um, I know the guy as well. He's, he's all right. But it's, um, yeah. So anyway, long story short, I uh, carried on catching a few of the other stockies out of there and in turn went on to catch the other 40 pound common that was now in there, which meant I didn't have to go back onto the lake across oh. the road. <laughs> and, so um, what? I yeah. mean, he's he's mega, isn't he? Yeah, that's the long common, mate. This yeah. is the fish that, that Jake caught recently. So this is still it? around. Yeah, yeah, this fish is looking a bit more ropier now. Obviously, it's older. But um, yeah, mate, this is a this is a fish that um, is really sought after now. Mm. Um, mate, look at it. Look Very at this little head. Yeah, boxy sort of body boxy, again. Boxy, yeah. long. It should have been called the box common, but there was mm. one in there already called the box. So that <laughs> one got the long common name. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and it was a long fish, mate. That's a brute of a fish, that. Isn't it? Uh, it doesn't really show you the depth of the fish. So you put this the thing width. in the net, what are you thinking? Another 40 pound common. Yeah, but from where? <laughs> Where's it like, I don't know. <laughs> we called it the myth common. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because we were like, well, I was like, mate, look at this common. I kept on seeing this common. I kept on talking about this common. Everyone's like, no, it can't be. It must be a myth. Mm. And I said, mate, I've seen it with my own eyes. So we called it the myth common. But it was only, mate, this didn't come out for, but. It, it sounds daft that you didn't recognise it. But a few weeks later, someone said to me, I think he had slipped it in out the other lake. And I was like, oh, so it's the one out of the other so lake. So you you'd never seen this fish before? Not really, no. no I hadn't really seen photos and probably bad quality photos. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I mean, look, at it, it's pretty recognisable so I probably should have noticed it but you just mate, it just didn't even cross my mind well why would it well, why would it lake. yeah, yeah exactly um, did you get it from the same sort of area was it the same do you know what fish the other side of it right. so where I originally caught the first one from that swim started getting hammered and I noticed uh, the, the story is I started seeing that fish really right and when I mean in the edge rich I mean like 
Eating in the bank. Foot out. Like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> eating the bank. Like you, you, it's one of them sort of fish. And it, I wonder how many times this happened that you walk into a swim, you look out and you're looking and there's probably fish there. And yeah. How many times do you reckon yeah. that happens? So it was one of those times that I kept on seeing the same fish coming. I'm thinking, oh, it's massive, that fish. Mm. And um, yeah, same again, same rig. Um, just a spot around the corner. Probably the entrance to the snags as opposed to in the middle of the snags. Okay. Um, in fact, where we make Jake is standing with a photo of his one is exactly where I caught it. Okay. Um, same routine with the prep, like you were trying to, did same you have, again, did you mate, have to little, establish A little bit that? of baiting, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I, I just started baiting swim 10 rather than swim nine. Hmm. Um, and in your in your mind, are you trying to draw them to, to an area and, and, and establish that as a feeding area, or are you just trying to draw attention to the fact that, that, that there's food about and did it need In my mind, I, it, back then it was like to keep them there like i just went to keep them there keep them coming there you know mm -hmm. um i probably um wasn't so tuned into the rest of the fish i was more tuned into that particular fish. fair comment yeah. yeah yeah um i didn't yeah, I just wanted that one. And and that's where you're seeing it, that's where you're baiting. That's it. Yeah. You've got to bait it where you... We talk, I feel we were briefly talking about this earlier, about where fish are seen and where fish eat are generally two different things. Because mm. um, they all have their favourite hidey holes and they all have their favourite dinner plates. It's so hard, isn't it? Like, yeah. It's all the advice is find the fish. Find the fish. But you're turning up at five o'clock. Find no, where the fish are feeding. Seven o'clock in the evening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then... Yeah. I imagine for a lot of your fishing, you're then you've got either eyes on in the morning. Mm. You're almost wasting that night if you're not on them. Yeah, then you're clocking where yeah. they are. Well, how many it doesn't happen till the next week? Then no, that's right. That's it. And, and then it's a whole six days of planning again and and, and thinking about what am I going to do next time? What mm. could I have done this time? I mean, it didn't happen for this one because obviously this is edge fishing. Yeah. You've got eyes on it. You know where yeah. it's feeding. Yeah, but that rig had been out there all night. Mm. That went off about ten minutes before I had to go home. <laughs> Um, so for once it fell the right side of the I, line do you know what I <laughs> I woke up that morning and it was you know, still not, 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 not much going on and I, I remember looking down and the water was up at that point and there was a little jetty bit and I thought I'll just go and have a look because it's so hard and it's mm. sitting there just thinking oh, is, there any, is there anything down there <laughs> I thought I'll just go and have a look and I went up and crept up and I had a look over and I looked over I was like Bait still there, rig still there. So demoralising. Yeah, and I thought, oh, all right, that's it then. Mate, I don't think I turned round and I was a little bit of a hill. Um, when I say a hill, mate, I'm talking probably a rod length and a half back yeah. to my back to my bivy, uh, to the brolly. And um, I was just about to sit down and the rod just hooped round, mate. I mean, you must have been shocked. It must have come in, dropped, gone. On oh, the, like just on the hook, mate. 20 seconds. Yeah. Mad. 30 max. Didn't touch another mouthful. Mate. Then. No, 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 um, no warning, no, no clouded <laughs> water. The rig was like I'd just put it out there, but yeah. it had been out there 11 hours. Mm. Um, gone, you know, just do you think that's because it was the bait was now visible and, and it's picked the cherry on the cake, sort of thing? I you just think that's the time it come out to eat at that spot, but and it was pure luck that it picked your hook bait up, yeah. Okay, I'd noticed that it was fishing right on the edge yeah. of that gravel. But not in the gravel, obviously. Mm -hmm. It was fish fishing right in the light stuff. You know that fluffy stuff that obviously it just seems to the silt, I mean. Yeah. It just sort of probably I think the gravel acts as a filter, mm -hmm. and then the stuff that comes after that is decent silt, and then you get into crappy silt generally. Mm -hmm. And that's it, it just kept on feeding on the edge of that line, almost like this line in this table. Yeah. It wouldn't go past that. So the hook bait on the line, was it? Or into the silt? The rig. Only the hook bait was into that silt. And the and the, and the hook link running back up onto the gravel. Onto the bit that it never really touched. Yeah. Yeah. And did you bait beyond the rig or did you bait sort of how did you bait for that? that? Always the other side. Always yeah. the other side. So, so that line to... was my line of do not bait. Yeah. 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 And then everything was this side, big five ounce flap hair. Um and the the, you know, the, the, just, the just, just it defies belief that it picked that up rather than the snuffle. I don't know how it didn't pick the other up. I think then I was using um, what uh, Spence was come out with a fresh stick mix thing, and I used to put like a little block on just to protect the hook, lower it down, leave it. It's like a that. little ball of fluff around, yeah, a little well. ball of fluff. I could see still see the fluff and the two tigers yeah. on top, so yeah. I knew that, like, um, see, in my head, it's seen that it's seen the tigers and gone mm. and just I'm having that. 
wallop. Yeah, I just think it swam in, went lovely, thank you. <laughs> I reckon it probably would have done what it's done every morning for yeah. the last six mornings. Come in, mouth full and off. Come in, mouth full and off. So, no, so that is fantastic. But it also serves as a reminder to the fact that you probably could have reeled in at that point. You probably were about to reel in, weren't you? You know, Going back to what we said earlier, yeah. had I not been out to see the spot, another 10 minutes later, because I looked over and I would have pulled mm. it in. But, yeah, yeah you, I mean, thank God you didn't do it immediately. Dooming, yeah. you yeah. know, I'm going, yeah. get, I'll, get, I'll yeah. get a jump on yeah. the traffic today. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing's happening. Yeah, yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and um, it just, just, these things happen sometimes at the best of times mm. for nothing other than just a bit of luck. Mm. I um, mean, Meg, sorry, how big was was that one? 42.10. So another massive common. Another 40 pound common. <laughs> I've got two 40 pound commons plus a repeat of the other one, yeah. which wasn't ideal. Um, and that one had passed away. So yeah, so it was um, great. Amazing. Yeah, great for me to have a second 40 pound common. And um, then I was a bit of a loose end. Didn't know where to go. Um, You're going to go back for the half then, aren't you, at some stage? I did. I, I carried on a little bit. Mm. Um, that half in your thing, are you thinking the half lane? It might be, yeah. That's a different lake. Different lake. But a lot of people get it confused because uh, it's only down the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I never went back for that. Um, it came out once to a mate of mine, maybe again. Do you know what? It may well still be in there. Mm. No idea. But that doesn't is, come out Mate, enough. once every yeah. two years, yeah. I thought I've had both the commons, I've had a lot of the other stock. Yeah. Although it's a lovely fish. I don't really want to stay on for it. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'd done probably, by then I was going into my third season. Okay. Um, I mean, but you've you've had more than what you wanted in a yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and at this point, how is how is your life uh, around that point? Because obviously you're probably going to turn your attentions to the, the the jewel of the valley at the time or the most, certainly one of the biggest mm. challenges, which is the Met, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's exactly Where are you there. with your so, family and business and stuff? Family... Uh, Times are changing. Yeah. Times are changing back then. So I started my business. I'd left my work um, mm. where I'd been for nearly 10, 11 years. Um, car dealer. You know, so man and boy. Man and boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was 20. I was a postie yeah. uh, for four or five years. And then went into car sales. I was there for 10 years. So I just started my own business then. Uh, so I was like... Uh, Nervous to take the leap? Shit myself. Yeah. It's a big leap, mate. When you've got responsibilities... Mm -hmm two children a wife obviously she earns her own money but mm -hmm. um you still got to put your money in you know mm -hmm. um yeah yeah it was but I, I still remember waking up that morning actually after the first day as <laughs> business owner with self-employed and i woke yeah. up and thought fuck what, what do i do yeah where, where do i what, what yeah. do i you no, know there's no there's no instructions really have any, like <laughs> yeah there was structure but no instructions yeah. Yeah, so i knew roughly what i needed to do but to get it going mate, i was nervous i actually mm -hmm. took six months off fishing for that did you? Yeah, I had, mate. I had to. Yeah. Everything had to go in. When I say six months of fishing, I mean six months of like even thinking about it. Mm -hmm. um, it was important to get the business up and running. Um, and so, yeah, this, this is this is actually leading into the leap it time um, when I started um, the business. So okay, so that was that was in the middle. That was yeah. That was sort of back end of my Thursday nights because mm -hmm. that was my dealer life, if you like. Car dealer, I must add. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my car dealer life. And then into my own sort of business life, which is still selling cars, but yeah, uh, yeah used cars, secondhand cars. Um, so, yeah, so things are going to change again. You know, mm -hmm. I'd gone through the, the children's stage, the family stage. Now my work life was changing, my personal work life. Yeah. You know, um, it's all about growth, isn't it, as a person? And, um, so yeah, I'd always wanted to run my own business and started that um, when I was 30, I must have been, yeah. Uh, what was the first uh, car you managed to get and sell? Uh, a blue Hyundai i10, which not only did I <laughs> buy and sell, I actually had to drive it around. Right. Um, oh, they're tiny, aren't they? Yeah, they are, yeah, mate. Yeah, but yeah. you know what? I'll be honest with you. I bought it because I worked for Hyundai as well, yeah. so I knew the cars. Yeah. Oh, and I'd earned a bloody good living out of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, yeah, that was the first, and the reason I say that is because when I left, the car dealer i didn't have a car the company okay. car's gone back so, so you were driving the, the car the you first car i bought was my first stock car you <laughs> right, know right. so um yeah that was it um and then i bought a punto and a convertible mcgann and after that it's all a blur you sold any good any good cart wagons mate because surely that like van yeah, yeah yeah do you know what there was a run of bmw five series tourings which is a lot of the lads were using at the time um, but generally it's vans mate and it like yeah. small Voxel combos. I mean, the caddies for the for the 
Yeah, yeah. I remember everyone had the, uh, the Astra vans, didn't mate, they? I had two of them. Oh, yeah. so, so my personal car yeah. after the company car. So, I, I, mate, I drove brand new cars around for like 10, 11, 12 yeah, years. You yeah, know? Yeah. I'm talking like brand new every two or three months, I'll get a new one. Mm. I then, once after selling my first stock car, my little uh, Hyundai i10, I bought a white Astra van, yeah. had to, didn't I? That the is the car fanglers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were probably white remember Astra van. everybody's company van uh, yeah. quarter years ago. Was yeah, silver, white Astra Just a van. fleet These were Astra silver. Vans. Like I remember they a lot of people silver. had silver, you know, the silver yeah. ones. Yeah, that was yeah, my yeah. second <laughs> van. <laughs> An Astra silver, a silver Astra van. Yeah. 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 There'll yeah. be a lot of people listening funny? to this going, yep, I've had one. Yeah, well. oh, mate, yeah. if Nigel Sharp's listening to this, Nigel still uses his same green Astra van that's had for like 20 I've years seen, I think. I've seen this and it still seen scrapes yeah, through yeah, the yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah 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 that's funny yeah um, so true so the <laughs> the business is it's taken you away but now but it has allowed you at some point to wrestle a couple more maybe a little bit more time into your fishing for the first time really. yeah. yeah yeah and I wanted to maximise that. You, you know? can up the level. You can go yeah. for a bigger challenge yeah do you know it's a conversation we've had over the years with mates and that that is time the biggest edge but for me it's what you do with that time yeah um yes it's, it's undoubtedly yeah, of course it's an you're edge. you've honed your fishing to a point where maximizing time is an art that you've perfected yeah, pre preparation was it as simple as rolling that out over more fishing time or um, it's completely or different. Do you mess it up? You know? I, I think it's completely different. Right. The way that I fished then to the way I fish now is completely. If I'm honest, I think I was more productive. Mm. Um, not that I'm not productive now, but I'm, I'm convinced those guys that were brought up on shorter sessions overnight as day fishing, morning fishing, evenings. I mean, mate, I remember lads just doing two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening. Um, and back then as well, sorry, I know we're going back, but, fine. but back then, do you not, did you not remember, right? If you went fishing, you went fishing Friday or Saturday, no one really went fishing midweek. Like, like I'm talking been years a big back. Been a real big change, hasn't it? Yeah. And, and nowadays and, yeah. I would say the weekends are quieter than the midweeks. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of the time back then, you know, you, you wouldn't really see anyone on the bank Monday, Monday, you, if you, if you, I, I reckon back then, if you were fishing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you probably had late to yourself. Let's be honest, regardless of where you were. I mean, I mean, you were kind of early on the game in in terms of making time for yourself. But since COVID, as well, there's been a huge change with the number of people who can now work more flexibly. And I working think lakes are even home. busier, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Working well, from why the lake, you? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And that goes on to where what I do now. Yeah, you know, I'm very fortunate that I can do do some work from the bank. Mm. You know, technology's got its pros and cons but um of course. It certainly enabled me i'd like to know how many people you'd never find a st statistic would you but how many people work quote unquote from the bank a shitload there must it's more be than ever, i see more plenty than ever. of them yeah yeah because but, but, you, you you know you you do fish the occasional busier lake don't you now or you yeah. can do so yeah. you're gonna see that yeah but the yeah. amount of people yeah. that do because there'll be people out there that will, that will like you said earlier rich clock off at three do you mean covert to, working for the bank yeah that's over. what i mean but people that commit to a full day of <laughs> yeah, working yeah, yeah. on the bank yeah i think if, if all you need is a, is a laptop then, <laughs> yeah. then there's why a lot not? more there's a lot more angling from vans with laptops going on than ever was mate yeah which Mad, is fantastic for as a car fangler what an mate, opportunity get, <laughs> yeah. it's one thing i've always said right if you want to fish seven days a week fish it mm. if you don't don't like, <laughs> it's, it's fine you know yeah. there's, there's no rules that says someone can do one more night than someone else you know mm. i um, mean obviously during this period your kids are growing up now does that mean that they're, they're de they need more running around the place or are they more independent you know what i thought i thought they'd become more independent <laughs> but I think you just end up driving around. So yeah. for, for me, my daughter's just learning to drive. So yeah. my son's driving, he, yeah. you know, he's, he's 22. So um, he drives, we call him Uber Jack. Mm. He, he drives us around now, you know, pub drops. Yeah, yeah, we've yeah, done nice. it to him yeah. for years. Yeah, you know? yeah. um, and now my daughter's 17. She's just on a, she's just started le learning. Mm. So she'll be driving and then I'll get even a little, little bit more independence because mm. she works weekends. She'll with. be getting a free car as well, presumably. <laughs> Mate, don't start. This. She's got her car, right? And the, I don't know what it is. I think I'm oh, a dad's a car dealer. Yeah. So I'll probably get a Porsche Cayenne or something. Yeah, yeah. No, you're going to get a Ford KA yeah. and just like your brother got a Volkswagen Polo, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, she's got it. It's sitting, it's actually sitting at work. So um no pressure did. then. She's gonna she's gotta get yeah. She's just passed her theory, so she'll she'll do it, mate. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mate, that that mate, that level of independence, even that, you know, and it's relatable to carp fishing, you know, when you when you didn't drive, mm. it was down to your mum and dad, wasn't it? Or the train and the buses. Mm. As you get older, is it, when you see lads that fish locally and they get a driving license, their carp fishing just blows up, then it? Mm. it changes. Mm. Um 
And has it always been an easy sell um, with your wife, like the fishing side of things? Does she she's happy to muck in and just yeah let you go? Yeah, yeah, mate. It, life's about balance, right? So as long as you can keep your family important, for, you know, family first, your work, because mm-hmm. um, your work's what enables you to feed your family and also be able to go fishing. Um, yeah, then you then you're fishing. Yeah, mm. yeah. Life's about balance, mate. And it's I've, I've always felt it's it, you know if you're with the right person they will understand that your uh, passions you. are really important yeah. that you need to that you can get out and do those yeah. things yeah. otherwise you're not going to be happy are you so no this is it it's about supporting you know it's in, mm. it works both ways yeah yeah my my, my wife sara she's very supportive she she's a good mother supports me in work you know we work together now as well um which you know that's see this is where you've crossed the line a bit cuz surely she's having to do more work if you're fishing <laughs> Yeah, and we, we do have these conversations now. So now, so if you want to go back to the fishing side of yeah. things, but you're right. Now you're right. Yeah, so I, I, I can string a couple of nights together now. Mm. So that to but me. But that allowed you to, the, the met was on the cusp of that. Yeah. Okay. That was the start of my, because I thought, how can I fish the met on one night a week? You can't, you can't commit to that. I mean, it takes two and a half hours to walk around it properly, mm-hmm. um, if not longer. Um, I haven't got that time. So it's it was funny, Luke Valerie said to me, he met me down um, Leap It, and he said, you should go on the Met. You'd, you'd like it on there. You, you, you know, you, you get amongst them, you, mm-hmm. you're, you're active enough. And, you know, and I, thought, I looked into it and I thought, Christ, massive that place. And I'd always heard rumors of how hard it was. It's known as the, you know, I can't remember what angler stuck the name on it, but the notorious Met, you know. <laughs> uh, it's, there's so many stories behind it. But though, so yeah, mate, I decided I was at the right time, like commit a little bit more time fishing, two nights. Sorry, just give you an um, idea how big it is. It's massive, yeah, it's isn't it? 60 acres, 58 it's technically, um, but split. That it, is it there, isn't it? That's it there, that's mate. The that's, it. The bo- that's it. The bottom yeah, and, so, and the north. Well, end. actually, you're going to need to blow your map up a little bit because it goes bigger. <laughs> yeah, you've so, got the fingers at the top. Yeah, so right? hold on. Just, um, oh, it's confusing me now. Yeah, so that's still the Met at the top there as well. Yeah. What, the no, think, what, the yeah, here. no, no, no yeah. the next one down. Close. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Is, that, that's what, it. Is that what they call the north? That's like, the north end. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's so it goes from yeah, from the bottom of the page, top of the page. It's massive. Mm. Wow. Um, so that's lot. why I needed more than one night. I thought I need to string two nights, and that's where it started. So mm. yeah. Now this is a different kettle of fish, if you excuse the pun, largely because presumably these fish are quite nomadic, and therefore no amount of baiting is going to really hold them. So you're you're having to change, aren't you? You're having to chase. Okay, yeah, Did so that, therefore change And is that where the boily fishing, because yeah. obviously that then mm. allows you to fish? Yeah, um, it's instant, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it's seeing, acting, seeing a fish, casting to it. So your fishing's changed overnight then? Yeah, really? I, I've, it has to, it has to adapt. I'm quite good at adapting anyway, mm. but it's whether I want to do it or not. Well, I've I mean, got to want to do it. You could sit a long time over bait there, couldn't you? People do, right. weeks two weeks mm. you know and there's a lot of people doing a lot of time on there that's that's the first time i probably really experienced what a time band it was uh, <laughs> you know and as i said to you if you want to do seven nights yeah. do it you know yeah, yeah, yeah. good on you yeah i couldn't do seven nights in the bank but fair so how did you how do you deal with with the extra time you know in your head um because there's no slack in what you were doing before you're engaged the whole time yeah so now you've got some it's like I'm I'm a hundred miles an hour as it uh, uh, mm. as it is, Rich. Like I, everything I do, everyone always says you're hundred miles an hour. Like you know, because my life is so organised. My wife calls it regimental, <laughs> right? It's not regimented. It's like it's just organised. Yeah. It's very structured. It's very routine. There you go. It's the best way mm. to say it. Regiment is a bit of a harsh word, um, but yeah. So it's more routine. So I know where I need to be, when I need to be, and where and why. So starting on there, I, I'd had a chat with my wife and I said, well, maybe because we worked out the quieter day, sent it to be the Monday for work. Yep. And she didn't need me around as much on the Monday either. Um, so I started doing the Sunday nights. And I think that's where my fishing changed from there, really. Um, Tactically a great night to be on any lake, isn't it? Or used to be. This is a debate we've had over the years as well. Um, it depends how you look at it. And, mm-hmm. and the lake as well. Because Pete, I... People, I, I used to like the Thursday because I felt like I was beating the weekend anglers. Yes, yeah. Whereas on the Sunday, initially I was thinking, shit, hold on, I'm going to be turning up 
You can have all that bait going in. They're going to be clubbed if they got caught. Like, are they going to be like, and then you can have all the lines coming out and then mm. everyone's, everyone's bait going back in. It's a Sunday, the best day to start. In the carp game, we all say, oh, you get the best day of the week, the Sunday. But I don't know if it necessarily is because I actually found the Monday to be a bit better. But um, yes, yeah. Got that extra time to settle, do you think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, there's a lot going on. It's like that big hit on a Friday, isn't it? So mm. it's like that, you know, everyone turns up. There's a lot going on. Although it is spread over the week more nowadays. Um, but back then it was more um, mm. how, how, weekend fishing. How quickly were you able to get to grips with the Met? And what sort of areas did you did you sort of find the fish? Just, mate, just walking them, you know, walking that place. It mm. is, it's big, it's public, um, it's got a railway line round down one bank and a river down the other, and you're surrounded by the lakes. I mean, it's, it's slap bang in the middle of the sort of start of the Lee Valley. So, um, yeah, walking around that, I, mate, I knew it wasn't going to be easy. I knew that there was a challenge there. It was completely different to what I've fished before. I've gone from, you know, concentrating on a fish in a one and a half acres to a handful of carp in five, six acres. Um, I mean, a handful of targets mm -hmm. um, in five, six acres to then going on to 60 acres, massively public. Um, but I had the time, so I thought, oh, that's a good compliment. You know, it's a good... It's maybe a good time to start this now. So I thought, well, I can do two nights. So the first night, I could almost not waste it, but I could do it. The it always felt like the session started on the Monday morning because the Sunday night I'd get down there after work and I would have to like, the gra I couldn't put the graft in until Mondays. Yeah. So although I used to walk it at night, it's only so much. I, I could never work out whether to leave my gear in the car and and bar uh, and just walk around mm -hmm. or take my gear with me in case I saw something I could react to it. So it was, it was a real struggle as to, do I take my gear, do I not? You know, and let's face it, mate, if you ended up walking it and finding fish at the top end, mate, you had to get back in your car or go back to your car, drive away. Okay, you. right, yeah. Because there's no set car parks. You you park at the nearest entrance to the lake, whether that's a public footpath, a, 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 you know, a railway station or, a, you know, around the back of the shops. You, you didn't, there was no set car parks for there. Um, so, yeah, that was my first experience of actually spending a lot, a lot of time walking. Mm. Um, and we all know like finding them is the most important thing so uh, there's nothing worse for me than I know that the start of an adventure can be great but but until you know what's going on you mm. feel like you're wasting time like you know you don't have anything to work yeah, with it's like what, what, where do I start mm. that was it where do I start because I'm not one for I'll tell you what I am quite I, I like doing it because I enjoy doing it but I like doing a lot of research mm. so I like doing the research on lakes and, and there's and, plenty out there about the Met there? There, yeah. there is but not a lot I find that there is maybe there it's happened is. since I don't know yeah 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 I think there's a lot more nowadays but yeah back then there wasn't a lot of info mm. so you just speak to your mates you know and um so I like putting together the information I like spending time looking into previous captures of targets previous areas you know times of the year moon phases that sort of stuff you can generally collate a bit of information just going back to the level eight I knew I needed to be there in the spring and there in the in the autumn you know, I needed to learn from that like I did and then I put it into yeah. into action on the leap hit and then hopefully going to put it into action on here. So I did quite a bit of research just, you know, purely for the size of the place, trying to narrow it down. That lake, you can narrow it down to like, when I say narrow it down, you can split it up into five lakes. It's that big. And I know 60 acres doesn't sound, mate. It is huge, mate. And mm. it, it, because the, it feels bigger. As well, Bro how broken up and also broken how the, up. The dead access. walking, yeah. Dead walk. How many times you walk down a point and have to dead walk all the way back up? Yeah, there's a lot of that. It's not like when you've got 60 acres, you walk around it, you could probably walk around it in half an hour, 40 minutes. Mm. When you've got that dead walking in and out of bays, in and out of points, peninsulas, you know, there was a lot of dead walking, mm -hmm. um, because you have to walk back down. So, yeah, look, look, mate, just getting my head around that initially was, was the first issue. Second issue was it's still a hard pit. And the other thing is the Lee Valley is well known for it is it's cray infested. Like the bottom's alive, isn't it? And the Met. There's a story of a hey, yeah, it is, mate. If you get a drop, you're landing on cray, <laughs> and, that, that, and that's basically um, and uh, that that is I'd say pretty true. Um, it's a fair comment. And what so, do you have to bear in mind with that in terms of what bait you're carrying and how you're introducing it? Y your rigs have got to change straight away. Okay. Um, Try and just keep it simple, um, as I did. Mm. Um, I started dabbling with a lot of hinges on the lever lake and on the lee pit as well. So I didn't always fish that that rig. I was fishing a lot of hinges as well. Um, so yeah, going on to that, going on to the North Met, yeah, you had to change, not change everything, but my outlook had to be very different. Um, 
bigger casting. Um, I was probably going to need a lot more bait as well because the craze were probably going to eat most of it. Uh, mate, I just had to adapt completely. In your mind, when you're putting that bait out, how quickly are they are they on it, the craze? One thing I learned is when to bait. Mm -hmm. time and time in again mm -hmm. what time do you put in that bait and how long is it going to last okay. for okay yeah it's fascinating go on yeah it's so I, I, I funny enough i got a message the other day about it um i'd recently i'm going to go on to this but i've recently gone back onto the met mm -hmm. um for for obvious reasons but um when i first started on there um I didn't know when you know you just you start your session don't you so you put your bait out then and then mm. you feed it little and often was my first thought process because there's a lot of craze in there. I thought, I am I drawing the fish in with the bait or am I going to fish to the fish that I see? Yeah. I wasn't seeing a lot. Mm. So I found likely looking areas. Now, one part of that lake is like stacked full of snags. Um, it's called the uh, Cadmore End. So um, it's throwing me because it's upside down. It's all right, um, yeah, it's all right mate. Try and fit more of it on screen. <laughs> no, it's all right. Um, so yeah, one end, the, the Cadmore End there, uh, which is the... Uh, Sorry, bottom left. Um, bottom yeah, left. Yeah. Um, that area there is, you can't see it on that Google Earth, but it's stacked with bars. Mm. Um, yeah, she's got an algae bloom, uh, bloom in this. In this yeah, spot, she it? has. It actually doesn't really show you the magnitude of the bar system in there. Um, that is actually the out of bounds as well. Just That's the, the bird that reserve bit, is it? That yeah. is, yes. Yeah, so there's a reserve bit there. Um, it's, uh, it's out of bounds. Uh, a great viewing point but a sucker for just drawing you into that area. Okay, and you've got, the, is that the famous sort of point swim up there? Yeah, the bailiff, yeah. yeah. The bailiff so just the top yeah. right of that screen, you can see the bailiff swim, cursor up and left. That's it. That's it, that right there. So that fish is the, 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 island the, the it's sort of. the nearest to the out of bounds. It's always going to be a bit of a business left, swim. Presumably, if, you, if you're brave. <laughs> You can hang a left. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and mo mate, most people just try and fish as close to the out of bounds. I mean, it's that. How many lakes have you got an out of bounds? It's always the best swim on the lake. Yeah. It? But I, I decided straight away to to literally leave that area alone. Okay. A um, couple of reasons. Busy and just couldn't get in the swim. And I thought, well, you know, when the times, don't get me wrong, mate, if they were showing out there, you know, two at a time, I would, I'd be in there if I could. Um, so I decided to fish a swim, concentrate on an area, which is just to the left of that, really under swim, uh, under fish called Snag Alley. And um, mm -hmm. which is just, yeah, just, between, just below your cursor there, there's two, that's the alley there. Yeah, that's it. I got you. That's yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it, you're almost fishing back towards bailiffs. Yeah. On, again, on the mouth of the bird reserve. Yeah, but it's oh. a surprise in a great area, uh, but well underfished. Mm. Um, so yeah, still talking, fishing towards that area. Um, so yeah, just started fishing in there, started putting a bit of bait in really. I thought, well, let's just see if we can... Yeah, so I wasn't really seeing you see them in the out of bounds a lot but they weren't really showing so that you're almost going with your next best thing which yeah is so you're running out of bounds oh shit there's a load of fish in there you know yeah. 50 car they're gonna come out they're gonna they're come out yeah. yeah um where they come out and go was another question but unless we thought we'd start there and um so yeah mate, I, I mean I put um I put a probably a, a considerable amount of effort in that swim and a swim called um the gap which is funny enough directly parallel runs parallel to the out of bounds which in theory should be the nearest you can get to them but it's mm -hmm. just not a productive swim i think while they're in their out of bounds they're in there and they're preoccupied when they leave the out of bounds they leave the out of bounds and literally go to go somewhere else. go somewhere else yeah, yeah, yeah just just get out of that area they're in there they're, this is the other thing with out of bounds and stuff like that is they, they, you know they're in there because they're safe mate they they mm -hmm. probably are having a bit of food in there but generally they're in there because they're safe um usually i don't know why it always sort of coincides with shallow areas as well i don't know exactly day areas isn't it like yeah it's places they can recharge the typical warm holding open, points yeah, yeah. aren't they um these out of bounds areas so um i think that's out of bounds due to the wildlife reserve, like the, that, reserve the birds I'm sure there's bird watching yeah it's something there, to do it? with the reeds or i can't yeah, remember yeah. but um, makes sense yeah it's the wildlife bit there but um some, i think it's more to do with the reeds than it is the mm -hmm. actual birds but um so yeah that 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 um, snag alley is an area I decided to do quite a bit of time and um, mm. and I did so and I had my first fish from there um, uh, from the gap, which was a stocky, um, but it was just nice to get one under my belt. Um, but then I went on to catch quite a few of the the known sort of fish. I mean, at, at the time, really? yeah, you the, put something together. You put you managed to put a run together. Yeah, yeah. so mate, it was just I'll be honest with you, it was just baiting and 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 just sticking to what. 
I'd learned, like, you know, I'd found an area that was presentable. The creativity was going to be what it was going to be, but it was right in the mix of where all these big fish kept on getting caught. So going back to my research was a lot of the big fish used to come out of that area in spring. Mm -hmm. It was like everyone was there. They'd always try and get in these areas. And it was just one of the most underfished swims in that area, still within the mix. So I thought, let's concentrate there. I had my wraps all wrapped up. and So you're looking out of that swim straight down that, the channel. Mate, you've got 60 acres and you're looking at a sliver of water. Yeah, like a And canal. you can't see the rest either. <laughs> yeah. And I hated it. It felt quite claustrophobic yeah. in there because you're like, what's going on to the left and the right yeah. of me? But um, So I decided to concentrate. And now I was happy in there and I was catching fish from there. I was, listen, I didn't spend all my time in there. Mm -hmm. um, but I was fishing around that, generally that zone, that yeah. area. And, and I think we were going to talk a bit about the baiting. Because yeah. obviously the cray thing. How did you? How quickly did you come to terms with what you needed to do? I was using two buckets and still do of party blend, just party blend, right? Um, pretty much. Do you think they maybe they don't when baiting? Yeah. Uh, when fishing, I'd use hemp mm -hmm. and boily. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I was just putting two buckets out, mate. And do you think they like seed? Will they eat seed? I don't even I know. Think they'll eat anything. Really? Yeah. I yeah. think I think a lot of it's the crays coming in as well. Yeah. When you've got that activity, the bottoms sort of getting stirred up the little fish are coming in it was a uh, uh like a food um what's it called like a pyramid sort pyramid. of pyramid yeah i was gonna say triangle pyramid yeah um it's a food pyramid so you get all the you know small fish in yeah and then the big fish come in and they did mate they they loved it around them islands mate there's a massive hole did you find the craze exited stage left when the carp were about yeah, definitely. I, well, I wouldn't say they left. I do think if the carp wanted that food, they mm. would tell the craze out and bully him out of the spot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, generally. I think you can see from underwater stuff nowadays when the carp move in. Do you know, we, we were filming for, for SIP. We filmed underwater the week before last or last week on a lake with craze. Mm. And when the carp were there, the, we only saw a couple of craze. They fucked off. Mm. like Quick. Yes. Double quick. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So maybe yeah. that's happening even on somewhere like the Met. Uh, definitely yeah yeah it depends on how many carp are coming in you know um but yeah we, we've had this conversation so many times like amongst us on in the lee valley you know craze are a part of are a part of the lee valley mm -hmm. angling so you know if you, if you can't get your head around that you're going to struggle and what um, do you think they do so so when you you when you put your boiling and your hemp out on a fishing trip yeah in my my worst nightmares every single boiler has got a cray on it quick i think they fucking eat everything <laughs> I do. I think they come in and they sit there until it's all gone. Right. One thing I've noticed, if you put a boilie in, I've got to be careful what I say, because nine times out of ten, because someone will go, no, no, they don't do that. But um, I've noticed with a boilie, they're quite possessive over it. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds daft. They'll, they'll about, hold it and eat it. it yeah. And it, it'll fend, its, like, it'll fend <laughs> itself off. It's like, yeah. this is mine. <laughs> so I thought, well, okay, the boilies are good, because obviously I want them out there for the carp. Mm -hmm. But then I thought, if they're going to be possessive over it, if I've got um, hemp and, you know, crushed tigers and stuff like that over it, it's even better because while they're obsessing over this boilie, my carpet of bait's still sitting there. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, the next one will come in. They'll always... And when an animal comes in for food, it's always going to want the biggest food item, mm -hmm. isn't it? Because it's like... It makes it's, most sense. Yeah, of course yeah. it does. It wasn't going to nitpick when it can have a boilie. So in my, th in my theory, I thought, I thought, I'll use a load of boilie and a load of part. You just got to go big or go mm -hmm. home, really. And um, so, yeah, I just I, I just started fishing a load of boiling, a load of particle, which I don't really like using together. But I felt there was a need there to keep some bait, some scent or something in the area if the greys cleared everything out. Because mm -hmm. generally, they're not going to clear out everything. No, no. So, and, and listen, mate, all the other lads were doing, you know, something similar. They, you, you'd always see a bucket of bait going out. What interests me is that most of the time we're so, because boilies are expensive, right? Yeah. Most of the time you protect that. At to all costs, but you're sacrificing your boilies. Yeah, you know, you're almost like it's it's crazy, like sacrificial isn't Sacrificial introduction, yeah, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, well, everyone's everyone's misses going. Well, you just throw that in the water. Yeah, yeah, well, but yeah, but unfortunately, you have to throw even more of it in the yeah. water. At, uh, you know, in the Lee Valley. Yeah. yeah, yeah, down uh, the Met. And when they eat a boilie, yeah. Tom, are they? Do you feel like that's releasing signals as they're eating? Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. And definitely. noise, even perhaps noise, yeah. crunching. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, mm. yeah, because I, I, I do believe there's. You know when crop come in, obviously they're they're they're, they're crunching the yes, food and yeah, especially nuts and all like yeah. It, it's feed, it's a feeding response, isn't mm -hmm. it? 
Um, so yeah, um, and the craze are obviously digesting this. They're yeah. passing it out yeah. and everything. It's all part of the building up to to sort of a, a, something that's interesting. Carp. Yeah, have you ever walked past a restaurant and heard to people, and you can hear the cutlery? Mm. Think, oh, I'm a bit hungry actually. Mm. Go in I there. Think that's so. why they like, don't they like pump out smell of freshly baked bread in the supermarket? Yeah, that's why they do it. Yeah, to go to the back of the store. So yeah. you have to go to the back of the store yeah. to get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's exactly um, why they do it. Same same theory, mate. Yeah. Um, um, to, so the, these mirrors in the in the Met, yeah, they are. Very distinctive, aren't they? Yeah, very distinctive. Old. They're warriors, mate. They're mm -hmm. fishing there. Have seen it all. Been through it all. Um, yeah, and they're, they're they're tricky. They're tricky fish. You well, know? Did you have particular ones in mind when you started on there, or was it just a case of I want to? Mate, take do you know what off? the stock of the the, the the big fish? It probably held the the most amount of big fish in the Lee Valley at the time. I would mm. say I might get pulled up for that. Yeah, but I reckon it's roughly. I would say yeah. it's the, the certainly the best quality fish mm -hmm. as well um like as in you know they were big brutey mirrors all um, muscular sort of like yeah just, they wrist. just look they yeah. just look they look hard you yeah. know like yeah. proper hard no they were they were all just big power powerful yeah. fish um all had a bit of character every one of them was different mm -hmm. um there was a there, at the time the, the the biggest known one in there was a fish called Els fish right named after a guy that fished for it and caught it mm -hmm. um that for me was never the one I wanted. I always we oh, we always used to call that, and it sounds terrible, a backup fifty, <laughs> because the other fish, which were forties yeah. and thirties, um, were more like I don't know, mate. They were just better fish. They were just nicer fish, you know, a bit more about them, a bit of character, um, and that's what why we fished it. Um, were any of those leathery ones still alive like the toothpaste and fish no like so they 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 had um rec i say recently they i think one of them may have been but because yeah that was probably three years before that okay the very end of those the fish. very end but the prime if that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah so the very end of it but the but the i would say i just joined it at the back end of the prime mm -hmm. um so i managed to um yeah, get two nights a week in down there, which, you know, for me was double the amount of time, but the lake was probably double as hard and 10 times the size. And it, it didn't feel like I was at much more of an advantage, you know, mm, mm. because I I changed massively from a small lake with no time to a big lake with a couple of nights. Do you find that you're able to switch off from work? No. Nah. I, I try and I always say to immerse myself while I'm fishing as much as I can. For a lot of the time, I can't. Back then on my single nights, I could because I worked for someone else. Mm -hmm. When you work for yourself, you're kidding yourself when you think you're leaving your work at home. You don't. It's always in the back of your mind. But then because to, to, to be able to get these two nights a week, I had to work the Monday still at the bank, on the bank. Mm -hmm. um, I had to go on auctions. I have to still, you know, emails, phone calls, stuff like that. My phone is constantly on. I mean, there's quite a lot of missed calls there now. But, um, yeah, so I have to work from the bank. There's no way about it, mate. If I want to get my Sunday, Monday night in, my two nights a week, whether it's them nights or another nights, I'm going to have to work while I'm there. So I can't ever fully immerse myself, but I do really try to. Mm. Um, I have cut off point with my work. Like, right, okay, that's it. I need to immerse myself. I mute it, you know, an hour or two, usually in, in the later evenings or when first. You, yeah, thing. Yeah. I, that's why I love getting up early. You know, I love being there early because... I feel like my phone doesn't really start till nine. So mm. I can forget about the phone till nine in the morning. And, uh, you know, those first three hours of light at the moment is six o'clock, isn't it, roughly? No, probably seven. But, uh, yeah, it's so important to me. Um, and then I have to work for a bit and then I sort of immerse myself back into the fishing later on in the day. But listen, mate, you know, just to be able to be two nights on the bank is great. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're digressing a little bit. But so, yeah, going back on to, to that is that, I felt that it was achievable with the time that I now had um, good quality bait and just started fishing a lot of bait for a lot of the time, really. Mm -hmm. There was some some mega fishing there. I think there's a couple of you got um, probably um, the first couple of fish I had out of there was a fish called Two Scrapes, which was... Um, which was one of the older sort of mirrors. A real half look old as well, mate. Like, it yeah. looks so old. And, there you go. And yeah, yeah, look at it. 
<laughs> That's a warrior, isn't it? In it yeah. Yeah. Sandpapery skin. Yeah. 30, sort of, oh, gee, was it 40? I can't even remember. 38, high 38s, I think. Yeah, the tail really yeah. is what you draw. I mean, look the at the eyes, tail on it. it. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. With a scarred, scarred up. Look at the mouth, black. I mean, again, how much do these fish sort of mirror their environment on, on a pit like that? Just oh, to, completely. Like, I mean, look at it. Mm. And it's a snaggy pit, isn't it? It's yeah, yeah. Pit. Wild, wild. Mate, it's, do you know what we call a jungle in the park? It's like, it is the jungle in the park. It's a crazy place with crazy people, crazy anglers, um, mm. with, with awesome fish. I mean, that fish has actually passed away now, but yeah. Um, that just, it, not totally surprised. Having seen there are, it. Time yeah. and time and again, yeah. isn't it? So I knew that to catch these fish, I was going to have to put the effort in now and hopefully get a few under my belt. Um, and that's what happened. So I had that two scrapes. Um, there's uh, some real old fish. Have you got that one of um, the bullheads? Because even <laughs> even when Toby saw it, he went, Christ. Uh, bullheads, mate, right yeah. at the top there, Toby. Bullheads, mate, yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe so this... <laughs> yeah, look at it. This was a fish I had actually up the other end. I mean, um, the scales, you barely like discern skin, them. From the, yeah. It was sandpaper. Yeah. Um, well, no slime on it, really, that you can see. It's all rough. Rough, dry dry just <laughs> old yeah that just screams old both it? of their eyes are very similar similar in the sense they yeah look like yeah they're, they're, yeah do you know what? it's always quite murky on the met yeah uh, it's quite a murky pit and you saw that algae bit. Yes. i think that's just oh it is yeah, yeah. mate it, it's quite often just just murky it's not I mean, it's, it, I, i've never turned up there and thought ah oh, it looks beautiful the water looks beautiful it's always greeny tinge to it i don't know why but is what it is but the fish look great so that's all that matters yeah he's um, he's mega that one yeah so that's quite a rare one that never used to come up too much don't even know if it's still in there hopefully um, it is i mean it must look even older by now yeah i mean can it get any older i mean <laughs> um yeah i mean show us to show us one of the that what what you might recognize as one of the more sort of like those um muscular like cleaner so mirrors, like. so along so the the met had a good stock like a real good stock of fish probably i, I don't know hundreds just to say 100 70 to 100 mm. um as the, the the main pack of the fish was you know built up of those big 40 pounders and obviously l's being at 50 but behind that it was always known for these thick mm. wristed round tails mirrors um i was trying to get the whole sentence out yeah. there because they are all of that and more mm. and some of them mate like just catching them was the met for me like that like the, it, you talk to anyone that's fished the met mate they're the ones that that, that really sort of like oh, man, i had one of them round tails last yeah. night that's mega fish so something like um did we put a picture on there of the um I mean, gristle is that? No, more, more the, more the. Um, keep on going up, so. Yeah, that, that one that, there, yeah. that one there. So that one there, I don't know if you can see that. That is a typical North Met round town, mm -hmm. battle scarred. Like, look at it, mate. It's a small brute. head, yeah. high shoulder. And they beat the absolute yeah. crap out of you as yeah. well. Like you, you, you don't know Were what's you going on. Were catching these from that gap swim? No. So uh, it, uh, it, do you know what? There's so much to talk about. It, it's hard because I, I get thrown. I just realised that actually I spent a lot of time up the other end as well. Mm -hmm. It just come back to me, and um, this I spent a lot of boily fishing up the other end because back then you could get away with it because there weren't too many craze. But this, this um, and I mean solely boily fishing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this fish was from um, from the other end, but yeah, I mean, there, there, there was probably I don't know ten, fifteen like that in there. And that's a little you got a little self take clicker there. And yes, the right mate, hand. all yeah. my photos are ninety. Oh Christ, probably ninety five percent of my photos, maybe even more, are self takes, mate. Yeah. So. And did despite not being from the Lee Valley, did you have a network of people at this stage that perhaps if you did get something exceptional, you'd call? Or that? Or yeah, yeah, there was a couple of guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Luke Valerie was one of them. Yeah. Um, He'd actually done extremely so, well on that lake, hadn't he? Um, mate, yeah. that guy, you know, he, he catches carp no matter where he goes. He knows exactly what he's doing. He knows mm. exactly how to do it and he does it. Um, he's a real nice guy, Luke. And um, so I actually met the two Lukes, funny enough. So Bullhead's mate that we saw there, Luke Stevenson took the photo of that. Mm -hmm. And Two Scrapes was the one we just saw after that. Valerie took that yeah. photo. So yeah, they, they were on there at the same time. 
So we but fished that. I think I think we spoke about it. You know, the Met is extremely public. I, I not a place that I would be comfortable doing pictures if it was on the path. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I it's a nightmare there because it's just twenty four seven. I don't care if it's light, dark. There's someone walking around there constantly. Which is that slightly unnerving at times? Or yeah, very. You sleep with one eye open in the valley. You always mm. have done. You like you, you have to. It was funny. I was saying to someone the other day that um, he said, "Oh, what's it like fishing around now?" I said. Well, you know, when you're happy to have a bite in the morning, I said, I'm just happy that my rods are still there in the morning. <laughs> like, you know, and, and, and as bad as that sounds, you know, these things happen, mate. When they're public lakes, yeah, it's, you, you've got to be aware of your surroundings, the people. You can't just forget about everything behind you because ultimately that's all your fishing gear, everything you pay for is expensive. So you just got to be careful. I think, Rich, if you, if you think about it, anyone that leaves spot rods and marker rods out at night on a public lake you're asking for aren't you mm -hmm. you just got to resist temptation bolt yourself in a little bit try just think it about out. it yeah just think mm. uh, for your safety as well really um yeah. listen i'm not i'm not making it out to be a dangerous place it's not um it's just public yeah it's no different probably to any other public lake in the country mm. you just got to be aware of your surroundings and the people in it but um an enjoyable place to be um you could spend hours talking about the North Met and you really could. You could you could go into every detail about everything about it. But um No, I mean we're not we're not we're not here to kind of like pick over every pick. Yeah. You know, we want to give people a nice yeah. outline of what yeah. of what you did and, and it's been great yeah. so far. But how did you draw a line under your first stint on the Met? Right, you guys are going to see beyond the fourth wall here because usually we try and make our cuts on this as seamless as possible. So sorry, Tobes. But, <laughs> Thank you, mate. Yeah, the magic's but, gone. <laughs> but, but what's actually happened is I think I led Tom off down the wrong path slightly and he has remembered that he caught one of the, well, it's one of the finest, one of the oldest fish in the Lee Valley, Tom, it, mm. before the Met, right? Yeah, yeah. It was. It, I don't know how we sort of sort of missed that I, but, um, I decoyed you off down the cement yeah, yeah I, I, and I was just Rich. going with it yeah yeah I didn't know what, what quite what to do but um yeah I, there was a there was a, a a brief break should I say in fishing on the leap pit and prior to the met mm. um that I went and fished for I took the opportunity to fish for a fish and it's something we keep on talking about is time and time in the right time to go and the right time to try and catch certain mm -hmm. fish before they get too old and yeah. you know deteriorate. So um, yeah, so I took the chance and went to a fisher lake called Friday Lake. Um, no, I'd heard about this a long time yeah. ago. Um, and, and I think even at the time- Was that the right one? one there? Yeah. yeah, that's it. Yep. Yep. Even at the time, this was renowned for being an old carp, wasn't it? Yeah, tricky, old, yeah. Yeah, what we're we talking about, the fish is called Harttail. Harttail, Harttail, um, well known. It was always re regarded as one of the oldest most sought after carp in the Lee Valley. Mm -hmm. So um, one of, I must put. Was it a fish that you were aware of? Oh, did you become aware of it after you started fishing the valley? Yeah, so yeah. when you start fishing the valley, like you do any valley, you start getting to know fish, the lakes, the anglers that have caught them um, and what they're all about. And you, you know, it's like, you, you see you see a photo, it piques your interest and you're like, wow, yeah, you know, that goes on a list. And mm. and that was just one of them. And uh, uh, mate, one of these, that this carp was either a grueler or you got very lucky. And for me, I put in two nights in the winter, 10 at prime time in June, not in a row, just you know, one. What made you think June was the right time to, to rock up? Uh, Start research season. again, no research oh. again. So yeah. um, I knew that it would always do, um, usually a couple, of, a couple of quick captures in the spring. Mm. And um, yeah, to heart towel for yeah. me was, um, just one I had to have, mate. It had to be in the album. Was it a fish that you were aware of that you felt like time was likely to be short with? Yeah, definitely, because it was already one of the oldest in the valley anyway. Yeah. I'd started to see a few of the Met fish. Um, obviously, we'd lost the Lee Pit Common, which was younger than this fish. Mm -hmm. uh, just, just one of those. I thought, shit, if I don't go now yeah. and do it right now, and I was up for it as well. So I thought, let's just go. Let's go and do it. And it, mate, I turned out it was quiet. There was a couple of guys fishing it. And um, I was very fortunate to go through. That was definitely a, 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 that was definitely a case of right place, right time. Mm -hmm. 
and it all just sort of uh, so fell what, into place. When you went in the winter, what did you do? What, what? So in the winter, I turned up. Um, I just fancied change of venue, mate. Um, just uh, that was all it, it was all it was, and I thought it would be a good chance to have a good lead around, get the, actually see the lake. I'd never walked it, mm. uh, so yeah, just to have a quick look around, quick lead about. Found a couple of likely looking areas. Spoke to my friend Mike, who had had it the I don't know four or five years prior, but um, and he sort of showed me um, on a map. Which I think I've, I've got it. The actual map he drew for me at the leap it. Mm. I've got it still with me, and um, yeah, it's a couple of like, like you know good areas for it. But it turned out that I'd fished. Um, I fished one area, baited the other. I quite often do this as well. Fish one area, bait the other, and um, I'd done nine of the nights in this baited area. Spent the put a, put a bit of grafting, you know, and weed raked a, an area out. And I'd had a few fish off it, but in the back of my mind, I knew where I needed to be. And the more fish I caught, I thought, hold up, I'm going to be going through the same thing as everyone else, catching all the other fish and not her. Mm. And um, one morning I woke up and see them showing at distance, but not far from where um, um, I'd been baiting in the other swim. And as the fish moved down, I heard a big, um, heard and then looked and saw um, a, a decent fish show to my right out about 100 yards, 80 yards. Um, so I was fishing in the, if you've got that. So if I was fishing, move your cursor over to the right there onto that bank. Uh, yeah, that's it. So I was fishing the swim there called the Old Cave, which is actually an old swim. Mm. I reopened it just so I could fish it. Um, but I was baiting um, just further up and there's a hump funny enough the hump was probably an inch that's it right there the hump that, that was in the water there mm. it, known to have come from there quite a few times over the years so i was just trickling pure bro boily into onto that onto that area and um that morning when i woke up i had a couple of tench because there was loads of tench in there and, and a handful of the, the, the quite simoe the carp in there but um not the best of looking carp there's fish in there called the pac-man the clown fish they're all quite sort of round mm -hmm. fish and um when I seen that um, show, I decided to do, because I had two nights, I decided to do my second night, which would have been my 10th night overall, in a swim called Darville's. Um, well, sorry, Darville's was actually shut. It's a swim next door, which accesses the same water called Steps or Slope. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, clipped them up, put them out there, and uh, nine o'clock that next morning, Heart towel was in the net. Like, and it, and it, it's, it, it, that makes it sound very straightforward. Very straightforward. It wasn't quite yeah. that straightforward. Um, I'd done a lot of research. I'd, 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 I'd almost put all my efforts into the old cave swim. But like you know when you're sitting there and you're like, oh, I'm not going to catch it from here. I, and I got to the point and I thought, I'm definitely not going to catch it. But I knew that at some point the time would be right to fish the other swim. When that would be, I didn't know. But in hindsight, that was the time to fish it because that's when it told me to fish it because I saw fish showing over it. So you're listening to yourself. You're listening to your instincts. Do you think that that sort of thing is the culmination of, of all the things that you're seeing at the time, and all the things you're aware Learned, of? All the things you've learned. Yeah. Um, yeah, not just on that lake, on every lake. I mean, how many times have you done something or not done something and thought, why didn't I do that? Yeah. I mean, we all do it. Plenty of times. Yeah, yeah. plenty. Recently and as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I still do it now. Mm. Um, so it's just about reacting at the right time, Rich. And um, I think that my point was, though, that instinct can sound like a woolly concept, like a bit spiritual or, yeah. or a bit of nonsense, but actually it's probably the culmination of everything that you've learned. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the things that you're seeing, it even is, if you're not yeah. clocking, yeah. you're registering it consciously. Yeah, at all. it's... Um, it's experience, isn't it? mm. it's experience. It's exactly that. I mean, um, have you got that? Are they, are they actually looking at that fish at the moment? Yeah, yeah. So, so heart tail is a. I mean, I'll let you describe it, Tom, because it's it's such a unique looking carp, isn't it? It's got everything. Mm. It has got huge everything. head. Was what I always thought a, about it. A cod head. <laughs> I mean, if you actually look, it, it sort of looks like a big tench. Yes. Or cod. Yeah. Like, um, <laughs> but it's got a big cod head on it. Big belly. Yeah. Small little tail. Uh, sorry, big tail, but small. Short wrist, isn't short it? Short wrist. Yeah, almost sorry, like short, tagged onto the back of a big short wrist. belly. That's yeah. right, yeah. I mean, look at it. You don't Wrinkly. get any more unique than that. There wasn't yeah. another carp in the Lee Valley like it, and never has been since. That, yeah. to me, is probably one of my most favourite captures. Yeah, I mean, God knows how we missed it the first I time around. Do you know what? I think we were just so engrossed in just sort of, I don't know, I don't know where that came from. 
I think we started talking about work, but mm. um, yeah, that I mean, look at it. How can you miss that? So had you what what sort you know what amounts of bait were you giving them to kind of to, to first of all establish the spot you were fishing and also bait the spot that you so I didn't need to establish the spot where I caught her from uh -huh. because it was quite a pronounced hump. Um, it was relatively clear around it. Okay. My point of view was to go along the lines of previous captures and areas that I knew it had come from. So it was important for me just to make sure that I had a backup plan. Um, I didn't want to get in, trapped into the position of catching all the fish and not catching her because it's generally what happened down there. A lot of people I went through the ringer and had to mm -hmm. catch them all yeah. or caught her quick. And had you been able and to I'd discern the difference between the two approaches? Yeah, I, and, I, I, and I think Boily only. I think I, I just wonder whether the lads that caught her quick was just using Boily. Because as soon as I went onto the hemp and all that, I was catching the tench, all the other stockies, all you know. I would say all of them. I only had four carp, five carp, and about. But you only did ten nights though. So exactly. Yeah. It's a fish, um, you know. I feel like we think about that fish every other night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that was one of those uh, campaigns that was short but sweet, and um, you you still got to appreciate them, you know, because. Yeah. The next one could be a grueler. Oh, you take um, them all day, don't you? I think yeah. we discussed it earlier. Yeah. Ultimately, a good friend of mine, Garth, always says, you know, it doesn't matter. It's, yeah. it, get it in the album. Like I felt like it was my <laughs> reward for being spending, you know, going to a third season on the Lever Lake, the fish dying, hmm. then moving on to the two commons to have them relatively quickly. Um, and then heart towel relatively quickly. A fish everything. of an equal stature to the leather in a way, like age oh, and everything, and prestige. Completely, like, yeah. yeah, completely agree, Rich. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's not an unfair comment. That mm. that fish was, you know, as it's still regarded as one of the best in in the Lee Valley for those that mm. for those that knew, you know, fish. And it there. was kept relatively quiet. Quiet, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I think that fish was over forty five years old. Mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, it's crazy. Probably conservative as well, that, isn't it? Oh, you know, yeah, 100%. Because yeah, the, yeah. I think what gets missed a lot of the times is how much, the, the, how many years they were around before, before they got that. even yeah. to, to double 20 pounds. figures. Yeah, 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 double figures. So, mm. yeah, you, you're never really going to know unless you've got the decent stocking records. Before we move on to the timing aspect of that, mm. um, hinges and boiling was it was it the classic big fish approach and it's something that's never left me since right um so you really have changed the way you angle then yeah i have yeah um it's confidence it's like i know it work it, it's big fish i've gone from catching lots of fish to mm. catching just the ones that i want like i know you can't pinpoint them and say that fish won't pick up a hinge but them them hit them hinges mate they're big fish rigs they yeah. are um yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love them or hate them they work yes. and they do you know I, I can i can say that since using hinges quite a lot i don't catch hardly any tench any bream and not many smaller carp mm. like um well i think the old the old corder underwaters at, at st john's proved that didn't they when elliot put his the original out, one yeah he's put his hinge out and and a lot of the fish ignored it and the yep. big common came over and just walloped it yeah like, that's straight case away. in point yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, the big fish rigs, and um, I mean, I could do a whole yeah podcast on the hinge <laughs> itself, so let alone rigs. But the the um, the timing aspect, because the fish was it didn't didn't live a lot longer. Right, it died. My mate Luke went for it, uh, Valerie, mm -hmm. and it died when he was on there next. I think it was later on that year. Yeah, it was later on that year. So literally, you've you've I had months. Yeah, months. Right. I think I was probably second to last capture. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Um, maybe third. Can't, remember, can't quite remember. Might have died start start the next season it died and I did it in the June, so it gives you another Okay. Year. Yeah. Not but, long. But your timing's spot on for you know, you you've not made the same mistake. You've no. you've followed your heart and gone after the fish that you knew yeah. was old. Yeah. Um I think what that does is to kind of highlight probably why you went back to the Met in a way. Yeah. Because, listen, we've talked about this off camera. There are tons of captures that we just aren't going to be able to cover in this round of, of chat because yeah. we'd need all day. Yeah. But <laughs> moon scale in the Met, right? Moon scale. Yeah. A classic Lee Valley dink carp like, yeah. like of the type that were there in the in the 90s and probably, in you know, stocked way back, you know. Mm. I remember seeing him in, in, in the magazines with people like Tim Shattuck and, mm. you know, in big carp with holding these... Um, little bent head or smoked ham junkie, Shack, all of the Shack same. All, yeah, yeah, all yeah, of the same. Yeah. So this is like if you could distill down 
what a mirror in the Lee Valley was like that wasn't like one of the ones we talked about earlier. Yeah, yeah, Mooney's yeah. a different carp, but different you had breed. to go back, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, Mooney, yeah, I had to go back. Um, and I still am back, really. Mm. Um, obviously, since catching the uh, the blue and that. So, yeah, going back for me was a, not an easy decision. Which it was. It was for what was left in there. But just sort of, you know, it's a grueler. Do I want to go and put myself back through it all? Um, um, but, yeah, it, it, although it wasn't an easy decision, I decided let's go for it and just, just get back at it. There was a two remaining carp in there. And, um, and it just feels like, I mean, for the rest of the world looking in on the last 18 months or whatever of your fishing mm. it seems like you've had a hell of a time i've been very fortunate mate this year yeah. i mean let's cover the the blue lagoon before we go before we we take what will be the last twist and that's back onto the mat yeah okay the the blue lagoon is a you know many people will have seen it from the yeah. from the the, the drennan film the esp film the yeah. terror with terry yeah. um yeah a huge scaly carp living in quite a, what is a, a unique environment right crazy place never fished a lake like it um just a a unique lake with unique surroundings with a unique carp mm -hmm. um is it a fish you'd been watching come yeah. up through yeah yeah so yeah it, it's not it wasn't ever really that much in the press like you never see that many photos of it and the ones you did see the photos were quite poor which is always which i always think is a good thing because it keeps it out of the limelight yeah um but yeah it's one of those fish mate i've seen it i put it on the list and uh, decided to go for it i mean you're um, having to head north for your fishing for the first time in a few yeah, years aren't you? into into bedford yeah you know like bedfordshire um yeah it's not far for me mate 45 minutes yeah. something like that an straight hour. up the m1 uh no i used to go cross country a1m okay yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah but yeah um yeah so decided to fish that and uh yeah what a gruel of that place is really uh, yeah it is it's, 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 it's super low stock eight carp uh, you know we're talking under two handfuls of carp um yeah. in 20 acres it's 45 but the volume of water is, yeah, this it makes it 60 yeah. acres well certainly it makes it 40 acres mm -hmm. um just for being 45 foot deep in you know in the yeah. middle so yeah um but the, the shallows are 20 to 26 foot rich so you know the shallows yeah you just just say that yeah, you know, yeah the yeah, shallows yeah. 20 to 26 foot this is like a chalk pit isn't it yeah something? chalk pit it, it's like it's got like a, a cliff down one side, a big white cliff, mm -hmm. and then the, all the banks are white. Like so, anything anywhere where you've got swims dug out, it's all white. It's all chalk. Um, it's just it's like nowhere I've ever fished before. But it, you know the excitement of going there and just seeing something so different. It was it was great, you know. And um, to fish that place um, uh, and and sort of I had to immerse myself in it. I couldn't think of anywhere else. I had to just be there for that fish. I had to give my all for it and just keep on plugging away i mean when you've got that few fish in a, in a lake that size but the ultimate prize is in there you just have to keep on going and how much of the timing felt forced on you because obviously that it had otters on there like so when terry had caught it um he caught it the april that i started on there yeah he caught it in the april that i started on there so i started in the march i think mm. we we're just out of lockdown i i, I don't I did all this on the video, but um, yeah, so he caught it um, the April going into that first season and I caught it the season after mm -hmm. going into the June. Um, so yeah, um, see, what were we saying? Sorry? The otter, otters. Yeah, so he caught it just after the winter where the otters had been there. And I think for that reason, it was quite quiet. A lot of people had um, were under the impression that the otters might have even taken it. You know, rumors I think I'd around. heard the same thing. So yeah. had I, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and no one, you can never really truly say it when you've got carcasses there. You know, you can't yeah. really say exactly what fish it was. So yeah, I went into it with an open mind and thought, you know what? I've got nothing to lose. I'll give it 10 nights, see what happens you know, a couple of weeks, might see something, might, you know. And um, so a month later, yeah, Terry had it on the bank and mm. um, true tell style out the edge and some maggots or whatever. But um, so, I, yeah, great. It's there. It's ready to go. Um, now it's my turn. Like, you know, mm. let's just let's go at it. And I, I did go full hog on there. I'm, you know, I did every minute I could be there. I was there um, in terms of, so we're talking two nights, occasionally I was squeezing even a Thursday night in, um, I was uh, reverted back to my, my yeah, Thursday. I was say, Thursdays yeah, to me, right, feel yeah. like 
like that's normality yeah even though i ditched them so long ago yeah, yeah, yeah. um but yeah so the thursday i started doing a bit more time yeah it was you know, there's, there's, there's no hide in it so i was um just putting the time and the effort in you had to you had to be there um those fish moved around a lot but i was very fortunate enough to catch that you know just start at the start of my second season i'd had a good first season on now i'd had like three three carp and a couple of catfish um <laughs> did you even know there were cats in there yeah there's like, a couple yeah well i didn't until yeah. i caught one yeah i actually thought it was when i hooked into it i'd actually thought i'd hooked a diver <laughs> but it was dark and i just thought well someone's come out in the dark yeah and well, because uh, of the because of the, way the weight behaved. of it well you couldn't stop it right and it's deep as well yeah and i just couldn't stop it and in the end it just it dawned on me it just went and went and went and i thought this is a cat yeah and Part uh, of the world that's famous for its catfish around around Bedford. Exactly, so, yeah. yeah. Jones's was it yeah. Jones's pit and that. Woburn, so. the yeah, right. place. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah. So anyway, I had that cat and um, uh, and a few other fish. And it, it, listen, mate, that place is is very demanding. If you want that fish, you've got to go through it. And um, and I went through it and you know got the ultimate prize how did you how did it all come together and you have you've, you've recorded a film on this i have with, yeah for Dan, thinking yeah. Angles and sticky and that so thing. you know people can go and watch that but how yeah did, you know for for the for the purposes of our mm -hmm. thing how did you sort of decide how did you get around to zeroing in on that on that fish in, in the situation that you could catch it so they're so mobile when you're over when you're fishing deep water the fish are so mobile so things like um previous captures and stuff don't really come into it as as much as it would on a on a more i want to say normal lake but normal depth lake so i found on there that the best thing for me to do was find areas where i where i could catch from so nice areas where I could present a bait because a lot of the lake, I found a lot of the lake bed there very unpresentable. And in fact, Terry even says it in his film that he's, he's convinced that some people who ever caught it on hinges actually caught it with the hinge like wedged up in the weed. He said, mm -hmm. because there, was, there wasn't a lot of clear, clear ground um, unless you went into 40 foot of water, in which case, you know, it's pretty, pretty, pretty smooth. So I, ch I chose, I, I literally just let it out, found two areas I was really happy with, actually had fish off those areas. Um, and just pre proceeded to stick with a plan. So I'd fish one swim on on one wind and one swim on the other wind, unless I saw anything else to give me yeah. any other reason not to. And I just went through that process. Um, it almost sounds like a bit of a boring process, but when the fish are moving around the lake so much, unless you're chasing them around, which I did do. I mean, I had a couple of opportunities of catching that fish off the top. And one of them, I actually went in for it because I thought it was it and it turned out not not to be it and i lost some phone keys oh. and, but i say lost it everything got soaked but um yeah it cost me a phone that trip actually um <laughs> so yeah um, and your I, line of the work is not ideal not mate i do you know what i did i flopped the fish jumped in my van and drove got a new phone right instantly yeah 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 because I, I can't i can't do that no, no. so and that's, that is true story yeah. exactly what happened i flopped it jumped in the van and drove straight out of there mm. um had it been the big and i probably wouldn't have flopped no. it, but, um yeah so I had a couple of opportunities on on on, 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 the, on the top because they move around so off so much on mm. there. Um, and it is a very demanding lake. That's the only thing I would say. It's just very demanding, a great place and um, an awesome carp. So um, I carried on just just fishing how I normally would, mate. So it hinges predominantly boily. Um, I, I I went through quite a bit of bait on there, which sounds surprising because the amount of fish, but. Um, I was baiting one swim while fishing the other. So you need to take often. twice the bait on a trip, really? Yeah, yeah, but not a lot. I mean, a kilo, two kilo, but you think if I'm putting a kilo out one end, two kilo the other end, and then doing that vice versa for two nights a week, mm -hmm. and then coming back on the Thursday occasionally doing Quickly it. Quickly mounts up, doesn't it? It does, yeah. yeah, it does. So I would say not a huge amount of bait, but spreading it over an area, you know, just so they're finding them baits. I wasn't like baiting on a spot. It wasn't like this table. Mm -hmm. It was like a, a smoother area that I'd found, probably more like the, half the size of this room, you know? Yeah. Um, so that was the plan with that. Just go with that, hinges, stick, and um, or catapult, Lovely whatever. Lovely fishing. Love it. That's my favourite part of yeah. fishing. And, and more so now, as I... As I as I've gone on, that is that's almost like my most favourite style of fishing now. Um, mm. Reactive, seeing them, getting on them with the hinges and, you know, using a bit of boiling. Certain but, times of year as well, it is devastating. Yeah. Spring particularly, yeah. as they start to Yeah, well, this is back end of spring. Yeah, she was yeah. at her biggest and, and um, yeah, that, f that fish... Um, surprised me one morning i'd lost one the night before and i was convinced it was her i i, I 
I was in turmoil. I could barely sleep. <laughs> that night, I could not sleep. And I finally got to sleep. And when I woke up, you know that feeling you get, you think, oh, shit, I lost that one yeah. last night. You almost forgot, haven't you? Oh, I had. Yeah. The first thing I woke up, I was like, oh, no, I fluffed that chance. Yeah. And um, I had a t- eight o'clock in the morning, next morning. Crazy. So whatever I left the night before, um, yeah, there she is. Amazing fish. Did you see that? It was obviously the water's crystal, isn't it? Yeah. Crystal, crystal. So you could see 20 you know foot that, down. That it, was that uh, one? it rolled once. Thought it might have been the other linear, which mm. was 30 pound, which I caught. Um, I think I did have that twice. Um, and then it rolled again, but nearer in. And then I thought, oh, mate, I need to get to get me this fish in the net now. And um, that's exactly what happened. Yeah, I sort of went, I waded out to meet it really. Because I'd lost one the night before um, on the on the drop off on the ledge. But uh, I don't know if I'd be happy wading out over towards the abyss. So <laughs> the interesting thing on that bank is you can wade out yeah. For it's four foot for like, I don't know. You don't want to make the mistake though, right? No, oh, no, no, no. If you go over that, you're done, especially with a set of waders yeah. on. Uh, they'd need the divers to come because they've got divers in there. They'd need to um, come fish you divers out. to come fish you out. But yeah, so yeah, that, that was the morning that sort of resulted in a, in a very special capture for me. And my first, my first UK 50 but one that looks like that. Like, yeah, it, it, look at it. It's uh, incredible. And it's a fish that's, um, it's been around for quite a few years now, hasn't it? But growing, yeah, growing, I, growing. Yeah, it's not got the age that I would say I usually would. But it looks old, though. But it does, yeah. yeah, and it does. I mean, I, I know it's it, it's not an old, like in terms of, you know, 40, 50 year old fish like we fish for, but they're, they're, yeah, it's an old. And what f- that's come through, having been attacked by. This is what it's more about, isn't it? It's the home that it's in. It's yeah. time and time and again, Rich. How long is that fish going to last with the way the well, predation's going? Hopefully forever, but, you know. Hopefully forever, yeah. yeah but in an idea, that could be gone next, next yeah. winter. And mm. that's the sad fact of this sport as well so unfortunately you have to go through I mean, a lot of the waters that you were talking about here are unfensible aren't they yeah they so, are you can't fence this you mm. can't I'm, if you could but it, it wouldn't the, met, the cost of stuff it like the met as well no, it's, it's, yeah. it's impossible mm. um uh so yeah so that I, I decided to go for that at that time because of that reason and how big was it uh 51 9 so uh Mega. yeah real uh, it's smart you know it's quite nice when you see things like because it does make you smile um mm, i love the depth of the scales mate they might even be like double scales there, along the there f- are they're, yeah. and they're thick as well yeah. Right. yeah yeah real thick um oh, look at it. it just you can stare at that carp for hours can't you mm. have you got the did i put a water shot on there as well yes i've got that yeah. i think it gives you a bit more the um In, that you, was just my favorite one that's all it, do you know what <laughs> i agree with you it's my favorite one as well toby yeah yeah um there is the, uh, there you go. yeah, that one there. I mean, it shows you the, it shows you the, the width of it more. Yeah. I think, yeah, it's a mega shot again. Yeah. You can sort of see how, how much you're struggling with it. As yeah. Well. I, I know what, eyes my, eyes were done. my, uh, my arms were done. Yeah. Yeah. Your uh, eyes sort of tell the story, didn't they? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> it was, I think that was Joe, Joe going, just one more. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, I haven't got one more in me. And then, uh, yeah. It's yeah. healed up. You can't see any evidence so, of the scars on the bottom, um, on the flat, on no, the belly. No, you can't. That. And Terry, when Terry caught it, it had a scar down its, it, it had been grabbed older three times. Yeah. It had one under here, which was particularly bad. One down here, one on its flank. And it's healed up like tremendously, Beautiful. but I think yeah. that's because it's not a, a really old fish. So I think it's had that time. To, Absolutely, I think like you, know, you said about the leather, these exactly, can heal. Can't yeah, they? The, 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 you know, to withstand what that went through, it was shocking. You know, just like like Colin did um, yeah. in St Ives. You know, it lost um, quite a lot, but yeah, looking awesome. I mean, I mean, it still looked good when Terry had it. It just Absolutely. had his war wounds. Yeah, and the thing um, about that lake and the hope that perhaps you might have is deep waters you know it's not easy for an otter if they can get out over deep water they're, they're not, you not know, they're so strong though they, those surp- creatures aren't they but over deep water you'd fancy the carp still i well, think a hundred percent if they can get them in the shallows then this is trouble, it and, and, that, and i think that's why they survived yeah. and the other thing i was thinking was surely because of the low stock that's got to put the off, off. So yeah. how can they go through all that grief but um yeah glad it survived glad i can get my hands on it and it looks fantastic in your shot you know that it's another one in the album isn't i it? mean it's, I presume that's like that has to be the crowning moment so far for you. Yeah, yeah, it was. After that, I thought, well, where do I go? Um, and that's exactly what happened. I'd sat there and I thought, um, what have I still got access to that's still of a, of, of that vintage? Yeah, like, yeah. And, and I, I always say I don't like to go back, like 
because sometimes when you go back, it's never the same. Mm. Um, I've fished lakes that I haven't gelled with before and just thought, do you know what? I've done a couple of nights, but I just don't like it. Yeah. But when you've got the fish in there, it drives you more. Um, but so the, met, the Met, you were still, you, you enjoyed I had, I had unfinished business on the Met. I'd left to go and fish another lake at the time, the Essex Manor, which we can talk about another time. But um, I always knew I'd go back to the Met and I'd always kept the ticket. As for when, I didn't know. But mm -hmm. then obviously catching that, um, I went back onto Amwell, which obviously we'll have to skip over. But um, I then decided to go back on the Met. I mean, and, we'll skip over it, but you caught Biggins. Like, uh, both of those venues we're skipping over. You know, yeah, for the that's record, quite tragic, isn't it? Yeah. You had the big and like, yeah. uh, but, 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 you know, nice as that silver common. Oh, I had a lovely run of fish. Yeah. I'm just gonna, I've got Let's it ready. It. Let's just throw it. Yeah, out. I just mean, that's, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not yeah, that, skipping over that. You, we skipped it, but yeah, that's, um, that's another Lee Valley history water. Another, yeah. and an old, an old, old carp. Like that fish, same again. I don't know. I'm, I don't think I'd be far on at Sam 45 50 yeah. again. Um, that fish, 42 pound, another 40 calm, and look at it. I mean, You've had a nice run of commons, haven't you? You have to say. Like, I do. I love a big common, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I know a lot of people don't, but yeah, I do love and a big common. And that's an intimate lake, and well. Yeah. Like probably the most intimate lake I've ever fished. Um, mm. Crazy. I've always, do you know what? That fish had always been at the back of my mind for years. Um, and I just never knew I wanted to get the chance to sort of fish it or even if I could get a ticket for it because it was quite a. Is it syndicate? It is, yeah. 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 Um, and I, I got offered a ticket and I thought, do you know, what, now's the time. And that was just, that was just before the blue. And then that was close season. So I went on to the blue, caught the blue, then come back and caught that. Like everything just fell into place time well, and time. That's what I'm saying. You know, you're, when we spoke about you coming on here, that I think the headline grabbers were the ones, was what you've had in the last couple of years. Yeah. I know you said you might've had better years in the past, like yeah. potentially, but, yeah. but for a lot of us, you know, people sat up and took notice when it just seemed like one after it's another. It's the stature of them, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's the um, and that fish had been like upper forty, hadn't it? Some stage. Forty nine. Yeah, massive. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But a great carp. I um, just wanted it in the album. Ideally, at forty, I wouldn't be gutted if it wasn't. But did you uh, hinge and spread it, or was it? That was a hinge and spread. Yeah. 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 Considering yeah. a small water as well, you know that's. Um, yeah, when I say spread, that was on <laughs> I was a spot. Say, that, that, that was on a spot, probably half the size of this table. But yeah, right. it's still it's still a hinge and the spread. principles the same. You're exactly getting a drop in, drop yeah. in on individual yeah. baits. Joe always takes the mic. Um, Joe from Thinking Anglers, he, was, he always takes the mic at me. He goes hinge. I was like, yeah, <laughs> but spreadable. Even, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's true. Like, yeah. what do you want me to do? Yeah. Um, oh, it served you so well since yeah. you made that transition, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, um, definitely. But Mooney was. Mooney and Baz. Like. I wanted to go back to the Met. After that, I thought, right, where am I going to go and enjoy myself? I mean, I've got some great car. I want to catch more. Where can I get an accessible ticket? Like, where can I go? And I had the Met, and it was just sitting there, just looking at me in the face, just saying, call you're him, not come done. back. Yeah, yeah come done. back. Yeah. And I went back, mm -hmm. and um, just so I had it, um, everything fell into place again. Like, it's not, Mooney's not. So a fish that everyone catches on. No, is you it? either have one or the other. Yeah. No one has both. No, I can probably think of a couple of anglers that have had both over the. There's probably more, but me mm. personally can think in the la latter years um, of a handful of anglers that have had both. Mm. So um, for me, going back meant two fish, two fish in mind, which also meant I could discount certain areas of the lake. Um, I knew where I needed to be at the right times, provided they still stuck to their old. Um, routines of when I was first on there seven, six, seven, six years previous, seven years previous. And um, it just so happened that they did. And uh, so I went back on there and it, oh, do you know what? It's going to sound bad, this. I can't remember how many nights I did. Maybe four, five. Mm -hmm. But it, the, I don't want to take it away from the capture because everyone, even the lads that know, I, I fished this place a lot. You know, I fished it for two years. I know the lake. Um, I know my spots. The only thing I was thinking is, are these fish still going to be visiting my spots? Are my spots still going to be there? And yeah, it didn't take long to find out that that, that they were still there and they were still visiting them and mm. they just could still produce. And, and in terms of, have you dropped the hemp out of your approach by this time? Um, so I, I still use hemp a lot. I use it depending on time of the year, what I'm trying to achieve. Um, 
if I'm going for bites, like lots of bites, sometimes you have to get, sometimes you have to, sometimes you do have to go for all the fish. Like, you know, I caught 126 fish before I caught sea scale, which is, we haven't mentioned, but, mm. and I caught 50 fish before I caught the silver common. So not all lakes are low stock. Sometimes you've got to go through them. And that's probably when I more use the hemp side of things. I think I meant specifically on the Met in terms of the way you were using the boilies as sacrificial objects and the hemp to keep them in their zone. Oh, yes, so, so sorry, yeah. So I reverted back to the same tactic as before. Mm. Um, more so with the with the with the boilies though this time round. I was going to say because hemp and hinges like um... no. So the, the the reason you bait like that on on places like the Met is to keep something in the area just in case there's nothing. Um, mm -hmm. And I tend to find if you use the smaller items, the craze can't pick every single item up. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the main reasons we use them. And I still will. You know, I'll be going back there in the spring and I'll still be giving it a go. I will still be using hemp. Predominantly though, it will be boilie based. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah whole boilies. But when you went back the second the second stint, if you like, mm. um, were the craze better, worse? The craze were like five times worse. Like just, I, I, I don't think you can comprehend how infested these pits are in the Lee Valley. Like it, it's, it is that bad. It's I think kind of a nightmare, it. isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah, it is. And you, you you sit there all night thinking, is my hook blunt? Is my hook straight? Is my uh, am I tangled? Have I been pulled down a hole? Like these cray holes, they just pull the, the whole rig down there. And mm. Although you're fishing tight, if you've got a bit of slack, a bit of stretch in your mono, mm -hmm. which is why I predominantly use braid. Um, but uh, yeah, so went back, crays were just as bad as ever. And um, it was busier than I thought it was going to be. Um, but I just went through the motions again. And I mean, them two, the two big, the Mooney and, and Baz are, are two of the best fish in the valley, aren't they? So Without doubt, yeah. You're Mooney's got so much history it's an old fish it's like an uh an Averly crank tail Averly yeah, um I that. mean yeah I mean if you have a look at that fish I mean obviously that's the moon scale scale side yes. as well but look at that tail the head's very very distinct oh, mate it's just like I, every time I look at a photo of that regardless who's holding it I just think I want it yeah, and then now it's mine. Yeah, I'm like. I mean, what's even going on with that top lobe? Uh, it's it, crazy. It fold, it's folded up. So I think that's a. I don't. I think that's from birth. Yes. Because it's got like a defect that runs down it, and it kink. Can you see where the kink yes. is? Yeah. But it's also folded again on the inside. So that tail there is four tails thick. If that makes right, sense. So right, it's like right, folded yeah, yeah, over yeah, yeah. like strange little thing, but um, with big slabs along its back. Yeah, 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 and then just that one big moon so scale. What, what about that fish was targetable for you? In, what do you mean targetable? Like, like, how did you dis? How do you, you said you went back and fished the same? Yeah, because you right. knew that was somewhere that so it might previous come captures. From. Yeah, um, I could only go on my previous captures. Now I've got I had a little bit of a, a gap because I wasn't fishing on there, mm. but I just thought their creatures a habit. Like you know, no matter what lake you fished, it's the same things happen time and time again. Um, it's not always set in stone like that, um, but I knew of a couple of areas it had come from before. I knew where it liked to hang out. Um, and I just set myself up in the middle of that. And um, that sounds fair. Sounds like a fair, yeah, sensible. I, I was arming an RM because point. I thought, do I? I think at the time, it's a little bit tricky actually because at the time, Baz hadn't been out for a while, like a long while. And I was actually more fishing for Baz, but okay. I knew that Mooney and Baz sort of came from the right areas at certain times. So I decided to set up in the two areas. I couldn't decide which one to go in. So I set up in in, mm. in, in, in the middle of them. And um, yeah, instead of Baz, um, Mooney popped that up. That turns up. Yeah, even better. Does like, it rock? I don't imagine it can rock, surely. It it doesn't. It, do you know what? It just holds its weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? And I, because it's, it's quite hard to see in that photo, but that actual belly is quite far back. It's yes. way further back than it looks there. Um, mm. I should, I should have got a different photo because the, it, its rear end is like it's but it's back heavy, like, yeah, you know, yeah. way back, and um, yeah, it just sort of waddles in, um, just hold its weight. But mm. yeah, and was this a trip when you were able to leverage that bit of extra time? Yeah, same yeah. again, mate. So I've, I've gone, I've gone back to doing generally two nights. Um, mm. I'll go after work on a Sunday and I'll leave for work on a Tuesday. Uh, and now that now that you're you know you're on your second stint, yeah, what are the introductions about? into the area that you know that you, you've settled on an area. So what, how are you baiting to? See, with, with places like this, you can't, re you can pre-bait, but it's like with the craze, it's such a, you can never say what's, unless you're baiting in the edge and you can see it, when you're baiting out in the open water, let's be honest, how, how are you going to know what's left? How are you going to know how long it's lasting? So what I tend to find is you fish for the session you're in. 
Okay. Um, yeah. And I think that's probably the best bit of advice I can give. Absolutely. Myself. And it always seems to me that when, when, you, when yeah, people see, that fish. Gives you a yeah, Sorry, yeah I just want to throw that up. Yeah, it's yeah, it just, just it is far back. Um, Tiny tail wrist. Yeah, see, it's all wrinkly skin and that. Yes. Yeah, that you, do you know it's one of them fish you can, it's really awkward to hold. Yeah, can, and I think I that's imagine. why there's a lot of people's photos aren't like I wouldn't say mine are as, are as great as I wanted them to be, but they're mm. still you know they're still awesome. Don't get me wrong. What what I would say about that fish is looking how far back your right hand is there. Mm. That tail, if you just sort of covered that up, it looks like a, a twenty pounder's tail, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, <laughs> tagged yeah, yeah. on the back yeah, of this enormous yeah, like yeah, frame. Enormous. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the and it, it's like a tiger down the top as well. Yes, yeah, so, so we've just slabs. thrown up another photo there and just totally got <laughs> sucked into and it. The, and the wrinkles up. But it, do you know what though? It's sort of it's starting to get that. Maybe it's always had it, but that hollowness in the chest. Of yeah, an old carp. that's an old carp, isn't yeah. it? If you notice that over the years, and yeah, so um, unfortunately, I've seen carp go like that over the years. Well, the um, leather being the first, yeah, like, you know, did it, man, and that's that's exactly where it did. They're go. just old. I mean, who knows? It might have ten years, but it might have one. Do you know? It's definitely in a sign of age. Yeah. I mean, some fish, have, but we'll be able to tell you why. But um, yeah, it's funny you pointing that out because I noticed that it um, does seem to happen. Mate, the hand sinks mm, in lower, and yeah, yeah. Um, but but you know, great big long head on it. I mean, you hinged that one presumably. Yeah, yeah. So, say you know the, the tactics that you're now <laughs> accustomed. Um, yeah, that, it sounds like, sounds like I'm a one trick pony. I'm not. Well, no, you, um, what you've done before proves that that's just, not the case. Rich, right? Yeah. It comes down as I, as I said this to you like countless amount of times. If you're confident in something, why change it? Unless you feel like it needs changing, change it. If it doesn't, why? How um how high are your hinges? Like, are they are you oh, so I'll, tight? Or? See, this is what I'm saying. A hinge. I will use a hinge. I could use a hinge on a bottom bait. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Don't see that done. Not many people do no. it. No. See, it's just because you're using a hinge doesn't necessarily mean you're using a pop-up, uh -huh. which is why I laughed when yeah. you said something earlier. Um, but yeah, generally, I'll, I'll use them from two inches down to, you know. On the floor. Yeah, yeah. almost like, yeah. yeah. Okay. With a pop-up, I mean. And, and and do you do you tend to vary that? Do you go between curved and like kicked over? It depends on what you're trying to achieve with it. What, the, the, the bend the hooks, in the... the, hook, in, yeah, the hook yeah, section. yeah. So that is... I'd, I'd call it a gradual bend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, not too, not too. I used to do them doubled over, like the old a C shape type thing. Yeah, like a whiffy, like yeah, the old yeah, whiffy yeah, pulls. Yeah. Um, but the old whiffy pulls. So, um, but yeah, so uh, now I'm, it's more of just a, just a gradual classic, a yeah. classic hinge, really. Yeah, I actually use it. I like the. I prefer to use it. Over the years, I've used it like loads of different ways with amnesia, swivels, and stuff like that. The best way I like to use it. And um, is like the reverse combi way, so with an Albright knot. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I call it the Elliot Grey wig. To be Do fair, you know what? This is a matter of some some. Contention. Oh, is it? <laughs> only only oh, because it? James Turner called it the Phil Buckley rig of the week, and if oh, Elliot right, the was Phil here, Buckley. Oh, no, that's it, a fair point. You yeah. know, he, Elliot would all Elliot would contest that, no doubt. But yes, that rig, the soft hinge mm. um, sort of thing. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's your preferred arrangement these days. Uh, yeah, it's my go-to. I can't use that on 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 the cray pits, unfortunately. So because of the putty, I've had yeah. to adapt it. Yeah, yeah, that's fair so, enough. But, um, um, I've gone back to the older way. I used to use that quite a lot, and the only thing I didn't like about it was I'm sh I am slow with tying rigs, mate. And that is an, to get it all pucker. Mate, it's so quick. <sighs> you do, you've done it a few yeah, times. I, I yeah, I think it's because I do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I could just, probably do one blindfolded. In fact, we'll probably test. that I just one like day. to have that <laughs> that hinge bit real short. And and sometimes it's longer than I'd want, and it's and it annoys me. And I've got to chop yeah. It off so and, do you not the hinge, the soft section? I mean, oh, yeah. the soft section. Okay, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I strip back a bit, yeah, and then do the old all bright, and then pull it down, and, and so I'm left with a little like a centimeter. So, of braid. so do you try the hook on first? Yeah. Then okay. then do the old loop at the bottom of it. Okay, as opposed to a whipping knot at the other end. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. To be honest, though, it's been years since I've used. I'm just yeah. used the multi rig. Now, Get back on it. Get yeah. back on it. Uh, the multi, yeah, but multi is yeah. the same thing. I know it's it? a lazy same man's hinge. That's what I <laughs> tried at multi with a bottom bait. I have, yeah, 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 yeah with same. a bit of silicon. Uh, yeah, um, but yeah, no, it's um, uh, so anyway, the, the Mooney capture hasn't drawn a line under things for you because. It hasn't, but it's it's. it's I mean, obviously, certainly... you can leave now, though. You could, you know, Baz is an exceptional carp. Yeah, that, that you're still is still on your radar. So much yeah. so you're going back mm. um, this spring. I went back for both. Yes, I mean, Baz is a again in every bit as way. Uh, sorry, every bit as much a unique fish as Mooney. Mm. Like stupidly long tail wrist, tiny little paintbrush, completely different carp. Yes, yeah, like stretched out. Yeah, almost, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, yeah, and you were saying that. It's another fish that you know. It's another history fish. You in the think valley. it's maybe? I mean, are you? Are you? Maybe you don't want to talk about the no, fact it's changed its behaviour slightly, or, or may have done. 
Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's as clear cut as that predictable yeah. as it was right. once before. Um, I, I certainly haven't seen that in the last few years. So, but well, and you are someone that watches. Captains, yeah, I do, right? I do, I do, I do do that. I mean, yeah, I, I do, I do do it, and I do do it to suit my angling. So, it, you know, there's no such thing as you get in this swim on that time on this weather, and you'll catch that big carp. Yeah. Um, but there is an element of that to it, of course, and and obviously on a lake like that, it's big. There are other, there are plenty of the carp. Yeah, you know, you really need to angle these. You're now yeah. down to last one. Aren't yeah, you? you you know you think I'm fighting with the anglers, the craze, the other stock, all for one fish. Like that's gonna, it's not going to be easy. But. And it's it's a you know, it's not a fish that you see in the papers a lot. Not there are no, papers anymore. But you know, no, on no, social it isn't. Media no, you're right, you're right, and um, it's not an easy one to catch. Uh, I just really like to have both of them, but. It may, it may it may never be who knows well it may never be but there is every bit of evidence from today to suggest tom <laughs> that you will yeah, we'll tie up that capture at we'll some see. stage would be mate, nice listen thank you so much for coming on My and pleasure. we wish you the very best of luck in your quest Thanks for a basil i'm sure <laughs> maybe less than 10 nights who knows <laughs> we'll see yeah. we'll see you never know all you right never mate, know. thank you so much you're welcome mate thank you cheers cheers the thinking tackle podcast